Let us pray. Almighty God, we who have called us to govern this province, we ask our help to make decisions and laws that will be just and will promote the interests of the people. Almachtige God, ons bid dat u gedurende ons vergaderings ons die nodige wijsheid sal gee en ons motiewe syber sal hou en dat u ons sal help om ons te kortkominge te oorkom en al ons besluite aan u op te dra. Sieke Lele Lieswiletu na Bantubalo o Misili o Kulungu Kwipondo Letu. Kosi Sieke Lele i Afrika, Tina Bantwana Bayo, Kokela in Kokeli Zayo, i Niki u Kolo i Afrika. All this we beg in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Good afternoon, honorable members. Good afternoon, guests in the gallery. Please feel welcome to join us at the sitting today. Um, just to draw your attention to the fact that you cannot participate in the proceedings, and I would like to request that you kindly put all your cell phones on silent, please. Order, I recognize the Chief Whip. Thank you, Speaker. That notwithstanding Rule 198, precedence be given to the third interpolation to be heard first, please. Are there any objections? No objections. We may then... Honourable Danke, good afternoon. We will now proceed... We will now proceed... We will now proceed with interpolation number three. I see the Honourable, the Minister of Local Government, Minister Bredal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. And first of all, allow me to thank the Honourable Member for letting us do the interpolation first. Honourable Speaker and to the Honourable Yankee, it should be noted that in instances where municipalities are under investigation, these are either subject to a Hawks investigation and or in the process of invoking a Section 106 investigation. The criminal investigation by the Hawks entailed former employees of municipalities, hence disciplinary steps in these cases is not possible. In the course of my response, I will outline the disciplinary steps instituted by municipalities as well as, in, for instances, where records have not yet been provided by municipalities on staff members dismissed as a result of misconduct as contemplated by Section 57A.7 of the Municipal Systems Act 32 of 2000. In the case of B2 municipality, <clears throat> based on the forensic report compiled by independent investigators appointed by the Council of B2, entailing allegations of maladministration and misconduct, the Council appointed an external chairperson and officer to lead evidence against the two senior managers in the disciplinary hearing. The senior managers implicated were the municipal manager and the head of corporate services within the municipality. Subsequent council in, a co in coalition partnerships between the AUF and the ANC lifted the suspension and, charge, and, ch and, ch changes, uh, uh, and charges against the municipal manager. In the case of the head corporate services, she has been placed on suspension and disciplinary actions against her is pending. Furthermore, after being made aware of allegations of maladministration, corruption, fraud, and other serious malpractices in B2 municipality, I have implemented an investigation into the municipality in terms of 106.1b of the Local Government Municipal Systems Act, read with Section 7 of the Municipal Cape Monitoring and Support Municipalities Act. To this end, I, to this end, I have designated two independent persons to investigate said allegations. This investigation is still ongoing. In the case of George Municipality, I brought the, to the attention of the municipal, to the municipality the allegations of serious misconduct against the municipal manager and for the purposes 
of due diligence, transparency, accountability requested that the executive may table the allegations with, with the, council, the municipal council in terms of regulation 5.1, read with regulations 5.2 of the disciplinary regulations for municipal managers, as per government notice 344, published in Government Gazette 34213, dated 21st of April 2011. Thank you, I Minister Bredal. So if you could finish up, your time has expired. Thank you. Honourable thank Speaker. you. I see the Honourable Dianki. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker, and thank you to the MEC. He is asked to start first and has shared why he wants that. So I want to say good luck to your son for the metric activity. But as you meet with him, just, tell, just give him the bad news that in three minutes you could not answer the question and you're only left with two minutes now to answer the remaining. Just share with the boy that. <laughs> just so that daddy, daddy, as he comes to him, can even do Danke. the proper thing. But here it is. Here it is. Let me see. Here Honorable it is. Danke. Kindly address Thank the you. chair, please. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm just appreciating Thank you. This. Manage your finger. The, the question is very clear. The question is very clear. Has your office received reports on disciplinary outcomes regarding the seven municipalities under investigations? And what has the MEC done regarding councillors which have been implicated like uh, as I'm going to mention now, the disciplinary outcomes, MEC, in a number of municipalities, and you know that. The reason why you're not sharing with us those is because you're sitting on them. You're not acting. I'm going to give you very clear examples. Let me go to Langeberg, because you're spending Honorable three Dan minutes. Can't we speak to the chair? Oh, Thank okay. You. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank Honorable. You. The MEC spends three minutes just in Beto, and there's nothing coming out of Beto. But I want to share with him. Let's go to Langeberg. Langeberg, the councillor in Langeberg, councillor uh, um, uh, Nyamana. This councillor has been found guilty on seven accounts. He's been sanctioned for dismissal by the council. The council, which is led by the DA, resolved that this councillor must be dismissed when on the 29th of May 2018. That's a decision of the council. That's their resolution. So we're here today. It's the 27th of September, five months, four months later. The MEC has not done anything. So this does not need any investigation. Here is a DC outcome about a council who has been found guilty on seven charges unanimously by a council not led by the ANC, led by the DA. What he does, he does zilt, nothing. That's why he spends so much time on Peter because he can't report on this. And I'll tell you later why he's not acting on that. So, so we're here sitting with an MEC who's supposed to play a role of overseeing, monitoring these municipalities and, and supporting them that he's allowing problems to continue. And as a result of that, of his own inaction, this has led to further collapse and looting in the Langeberg municipality. Recently, in June 2018, it was reported that six Langeberg municipal officials were dismissed over misconduct, the same municipality. What, so he doesn't, I, I'm going to need him when he comes back in his last two minutes to tell us what controls he has there? Why is he sitting on a, on a very clear outcome on a DC and does nothing? Thank you, Honorable Dianki. Your time has expired. I now see the Honorable Makusela. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I must thank Honorable Dianki for bringing this interpolation forward. What we appreciate is that the anti-corruption measures are in place. We just need to see the action linked to that. So as the chairperson, as the chairperson of the Standing Committee on Local Government, when we talk about bringing these issues up, we need to see actions coupled with that. Recently, we heard through the minister, because for instance, in the, in the question of George, which was reported, the minister acted within eight days and brought the hawks to come and work with him. Now, I like making this example because what we, what we need is to ensure that we're able to see actions, and the minister is willing to do that. 
But Lando is close to go to a car, Kaliziva, Gunoga, Sibona. Gobangoku, when you look at the, at the Auditor General, what he says, the Office of the Auditor General says to us that when Western Cape contributes 1% on the total uh, funds that are lost through the, through the waste, wasteful expenditure and, 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 and fruitless expenditures. On the top 10, Honorable Speaker, unauthorized expenditures, there's not a single one of the, of the, of the Western Cape in those ones. And on the top 10, on the irregular expenditures, Western Cape, zero. On the another top 10, third, fru Order, fruitless please. and wasteful expenditure, Western Cape, zero, nothing. So that says to us, once there are some issues, because we must admit that where things go wrong, unlike in the ANC, we must take actions. What the ANC does, what the ANC does, when a mayor fails, that mayor gets promoted to become a minister of finance. Thank you. When that mayor fails, gets promoted to be a minister of Cogta. That is not the culture in the Democratic Thank Alliance. You, we Mark act Seller. and we act decisively. Thanks, Minister. Your time has expired. Thank you. I see. The, sorry, members, you have you have a member on the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Member, Honourable. Honourable Nkondlo, you have a speaker on the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. You may proceed. Honourable Speaker, now this is. The, the blow pop has, has deep, deep any problem. Two, two of them have just spoken. You don't get anything from what they are saying. This ship is in trouble. Now, let's... Order, La please. Lang Langeberg is not the only, because he knows he's sitting with them. So let's go to Naisna. Naisna has a similar problem. You've got a councillor in Naisna, councillor Veli Lewaka, who that municipality has also concluded the DC process, has submitted the same to the MEC, which suggests and recommends that Wakta must go. What does that MEC do? Same thing as he does in Langeberg. Now, I want to put it to him. I want to put it to you, MEC Bridell, that you, you are defending DA cronies. You are being partisan as an MEC for local government for not acting, and you, 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 are, you have a dereliction of duty for turning a blind eye on, 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 on problems. And you are doing all of that only to keep the DA in power at all cost. That's what he's doing. Now, if you're going to have an MEC that will come here and say he's acting on, he's got an, an anti-corruption strategy, municipalities do their own work. They send it to him for him to only sign off. He spends four months on one case. So it means he's not going to s s act on the nice numbers that, that is very recent compared to Langeberg. So maybe he's going to do that in 2019. Now, this is a problem that we have with this, with this, with this, with this MEC. I also want to say that everything is on his table. He's just not acting. He's applying his mind for four months. Now, let me just go further and remind him about the following. That section four... MEC of the prevention and combating of corrupt activities. Sorry, Honorable Dianke, your time has expired, but you may finish your sentence. Okay, I'll, it's I'll come back. It's only two minutes, sir. Thank you. All right, then I see the Honorable Makusela. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I think the, the, the ANC must appreciate the the fact that nationally we have been told that the National Minister of Cogta wants to use uh, Otsoren as a case in as a case study to see what happens when you inherit a corrupt government and change it around. And the nice thing is that the corrupt government we inherited it was bankrupt, run by the ANC. Now we have turned Otsoren around. And Cogta says they want to use that to tell everybody and show them what happens when you steal money and what happens when you don't steal money because the TA has turned it around 
the mayor of the ANC, Gordon April, was sentenced to jail for five years without an option of a fine. And that is what we are fixing in this province. Can you take your seat, please? Honourable Nakron Law, you are rising on a point of order. Yes, I wanted to check if I can sing for, for the member. No, no, sorry, Honourable no. Nkondlo, that is spurious, and that is not a point of order, that is frivolous. Thank you. You may proceed. Uh, Honourable Speaker, the, the issues here are real. We, we can't come here and act as if we Thank you. Thank you, What we need to be doing is to ensure that the money that comes in and the money that goes out in our municipalities gets accounted for properly. And Minister, please help us ensure that happens. Thank you. Honourable members, can we, can we manage ourselves with dignity and decorum? Honourable Dianki, you on the floor. You have, I think it is, two minutes. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, no, there's me, Dianki. I get me two minutes. Dunia de Nasablif. So I, I just want to share with the MEC in case he thinks that he's, he has got the freedom to not do anything. We're going to charge you on the following act, MEC and which reads, any public officer who directly or indirectly accepts or agrees to accept gratification from any other person, whether for the benefit of himself or the benefit of the other person, that amounts to the abuse of a position of authority. Sorry, Honorable Janke, kindly take your seat, please. Minister Fritz, please um, take your seat. Honorable Thank Speaker, you. Honorable Speaker, I think that the Honorable Members must leading this house to make that assertion. It's absolute misleading the House. And it's in fact, it's, it's, it's casting aspersions on, my, on the character of the Honourable Member. M Minister Fritz. Um, <laughs> Premier. Order, please, Members. <clears throat> I rise on a point of order on the basis that the Speaker is in fact reflecting on the integrity and character of the minister. Um, order, please, members. If, if I may, the Honourable Dianke is indicating that he's, or his party is planning to make, take an action against a minister based on statements that are made. But you can, I must remind you, it needs to come to the House in a substantive motion. But you may proceed. I, I am not making a motion. Let me help you, Speaker. It, you stopped me when I was saying to you, I was quoting, I was quoting for him. Uh, section 4. Honorable Dianke, please speak to I'm, me. Put I'm quoting for Thank him you. Section 4 of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act, 12 of 2004, that provides the following. Any public officer who directly or indirectly accepts or agrees to accept gratification from any other person, whether for the benefit of himself or to the benefit of the other person, that amounts to abuse of a position of authority, a breach of trust, and a violation of a legal duty, or set of rules designed to achieve an unjustified result, or that amounts to any other unauthorized or improper inducement to do or not to do anything is guilty of the offense of corrupt activities relating to public officers. They were not listening, but you can understand, as Musi saw Dear Makar as Vat Fanele. That was Dear Makar, so you can't blame them. The problem is up there. It, it tells you when, when, when we care. So I'm saying to you, MEC, you for not acting, you are not going to be left scot free. We're going to have to pursue these issues because he is now in a dereliction of duty for not doing anything about cases in front of him, not one, and I've mentioned two already here, that he's not acting. He's not even responded to this municipality and say, having received this four months ago, this is what I'm doing. And I'm saying you are being partisan. You're playing politics with governance Honourable in this Yankee, province. Your time has expired. Kindly take your seat, please. I see the Honourable the Minister. Chairperson, the ANC has perfected stealing so much, they're even writing books on it, how to steal a city, Nelson Mandela by city, which the ANC is governing. Honourable Chairperson, 
the, it's a shocker that the ex-MEC don't understand the rule of law. There's, there's a order, lot of cases. Please. This case and order, Honourable Yankee, you had an opportunity to speak. Thank it's you. It's absolutely not true that we haven't responded to the municipality. In fact, the, the member has received this letter. There's a process within the rule order, of law. Order, please, Honourable Yankee. So, um, Minister, kindly take I'd your like seat. to respond. Sorry. Hon Honourable Dianke, <laughs> kindly take your seat, please. So, I wanted to make a point. You, when you spoke, you were afforded the time to speak. The minister is now responding. Listen to the response and then engage. Thank you. You may proceed, Minister. Honourable Chairperson, we follow the rule of law. So, when and I've said it from day one, my term of office, that we will treat people fairly. So when we get the recommendations from the municipality, we as a province do our own investigation and our own research. And part of it is we need to tra transcribe the whole year. The whole year. Order, please. We fired a lot of people. And I can tell you through all political parties, there was never a bias from our side or anything else. The whole Langeberg issue, which the Hawks has now raided, will point a finger back to ANC councillors who sold houses. It's that kind of things we will investigate. The Hawks and the time frame on the Hawks, I cannot influence that because that will be political interference. The disciplinary, the person will get after we've worked through and transcribe all the evidence, we will then give the candidate 21 days to respond, and then I can, I can promise the honourable member I will not sit longer than two days with any of these when I receive the final recommendations. We deal with this. In his time, he'd never fired one councillor. This DA has fired a lot of councillors. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes that interpolation. Honourable Yankee, Badar. Yeah, my say finger. Minister Windy, Badar, as a belief. We now go to interpolation number one. And it is from the Honourable Olafir to the Honourable Minister of Education. I see the Minister, Minister Schaefer. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and to the men member for the uh, interpolation. Um, answer to Part A. I'm not certain of the exact remarks the member is referring to because we have not found any reference in the media on the 30th of August indicating that I would work closely with the police or in the press statement issued by us on the 28th of August. I instead urge SAPs to please increase patrols during the morning and afternoons when learners are traveling to and from schools. However, on Tuesday, the 11th of September, my HOD, as well as Chief Director of Districts, and I met with Brigadier Sonia Harry, head of the FCS uh, SAPS in the Western Cape. Following this meeting, I said that we are committed to working with SAPS to support them by sharing information that is reported to our Safe Schools Directorate. We are the only province, to my knowledge, to have a Safe Schools toll-free helpline. We have encouraged anyone with information or who has been involved in an incident to report the incidents to this helpline as well as to SAPS. Our role is thus to share that information with the police to assist with investigation. We have established a chain of communication to ensure that this happens on a weekly basis and they have also undertaken to give us feedback on their investigations. Part B, as we have responded repeatedly to the member and his party, the safety of learners outside the school premises is beyond the mandate of the education department and is the core responsibility of the nationally controlled SAPs. However, in light of the... In light of the recent spate in abductions, my head of department issued communication to schools to remind them to review and update their safety policies, particularly around access control, and to ensure that procedures are in place to deal with reported abduction cases. Schools have taken steps to ensure that there are safety measures in place at dismissal time, i.e. learners who are picked up at their school by parents or caregivers are to remain within the school property until they have visibly identified their mode of transport. Learners who require public transport are expected to walk to their relevant departure areas where requested to travel in groups at all times. 
We also requested that schools ensure that learners are aware of stranger danger. While we do not want to frighten them, they must know that they should be wary and immediately seek help if a stranger approaches them. Learners must be taught not to accept any free food, drinks, money or objects from strangers and should report any suspicious characters to an educator or administrator at the school as soon as possible. However, no amount of advocacy or awareness campaigns in our schools can compensate for the severely under-resourced police service. In 2016, the national average was 1 to 347, while the Western Cape average was 1 to 385, and Cape Town 1 to 439. The average police to population ratio for the Western Cape currently stands at 1 to 509, and for Cape Town, even worse, at 1 to 560. The under-resourced SAPs, as well as the failing criminal justice system sends out the message that it's worth the risk to conduct criminal activities such as abducting and sexually assaulting learners as there will simply be no consequences. Thanks to the ANC government's abject failure to pay proper Minister, attention to appointing the right people in crucial positions such as the National Police Commissioner Thank you, and Minister. playing politics with crucial levers of the criminal justice system. Thank you. I see the Honourable Olafi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Firstly, Order, please. Me members, honorable members. Honorable Makaleni, uh, honorable um, Olafir would want to speak, and I'm trying to get everyone calm and quiet. Um, the front bench minister, Wendy, please, thank you. You may proceed. Th thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, le let me first congratulate uh, uh, the mayor here in front of us. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Honourable Dianki. Because, because, Madam, because, Madam Speaker, because, Madam Speaker, what? <laughs> Madam Speaker, this is a you. It's a huge. Uh, uh, it's a huge struggle. It's a huge struggle to talk. And well, all of you, you do know your time is running there, right? Yes, yes. yes. And okay. <laughs> I, I know, and my Kenan is not helping. Yeah. You're not helping. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, thank you very much. This, this side of the House has been raising the issue of safety of learners for some time now. And, and I must indicate and agree with the MEC that she has been brushing this off to another sphere of government, to the police, and to everyone else except to say she will consider the increase of the budget of safety with uh, member uh, uh, mayor here. Uh, of course, the, mayor is not, it, it, the, the MEC is now going to a new uh, position of a mayor, and I hope the new MEC will really look at the safety budget, uh, you know, of these three uh, alliance, I, I'm not sure whether it's alliance partners, uh, but, but Madam Speaker, I, I just want to refer the MEC because she hasn't seen what she has reported. Okay. And this is what the MEC said on the 30th and the 31st of August. And MEC, let me just show you because you said you have not, not seen this issue. Which you've, so, so you've seen it now. Uh, where, the, the, where a learner has been snatched, you have said you have now a relationship with the chair. Thank you. You have now a relationship with the police. And one would really want to see what that relationship entails. Because so, so far, just in August, up from August to the past two months, already 13 cases of child abduction and kidnapping, Atte attempted kidnapping, has been reported in the Western Cape alone. Just the two past two months. Clearly, whatever you have now raised here is, is current the programs, clearly does not work. No one has said that the education department is responsible for learners outside the school premise. But MEC, if you have taken the committee serious about looking at the learners' transport, which drive past learners uh, who must walk for four kilometer radius, which is exposed to this kind of problems. So it doesn't matter whose policy it is, Order. but the minister has the responsibility to make sure that this policy is being engaged with. MEC, I also just want to raise that given the above concern, Order, please, the members, MEC you're is now, out the speaker. after a long time, admitting that this issue is a problem. And I hope your contribution with the police is not going to have a complaint session, because obviously we know 
What you are doing, you always complain, running to Pretoria, Honorable because you don't Olive want to have any responsibility your time has expired. in terms Thank of you. addressing the issue of safety of school. Thank you. I see the Honourable Member Cavido. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, fellow colleagues and distinguished guests in the gallery. The safety of our learners in the Western Cape requires collective responsibility of several role players in society. To think or believe that only the educational sector has a part to play in ensuring the safety of our learners would be setting ourselves up for failure. The DA-led Western Cape government has implemented programs and initiatives across several departments and not just the educational department in an effort to ensure the safety of our learners. Due to policing not falling under the mandate of provincial government, we have had to make use of alternative measures to promote the safety of our learners. Amongst the intervention the government has in place includes the engagement of the youth in diversion programs that involve their participation in constructive activities. This is designed to instill a sense of belonging in society and reinforcing a culture of identity and dignity amongst our learners. In order to achieve strategic goal two, that is improving education outcomes and opportunities for youth development, PSG2, it is crucial that our educational department continues to strengthen the relationships between the province and crucial national departments that have the primary mandate and budget for justice and policing, which are so crucial in maintaining safe and secure school environments. Thank you, Ma Thank you, Honorable Kavido. I see the Honorable, Honorable Dianki. Thank you. Where education could talent trail and the opinion trail in Gaba ETA, I know leadership of Fakum to Glanda. Goba Kutala, see Tela, Lendo Pala Mama, a Kayo Yang, I into my Abanduan. Abanduana Bez Golo, Akaba Catele Lang, a Kutala, see Tela, Umzegel, or Kaza to Kumu Lona, Unkulu and National. We don't know MEC, Ukwazil and Ogus Patel, Umtet Hochua, let's go in, and a tongue with National. Now, Gulf Negro Chongan was bad, they claim Kunzima Uza nom Teto, because the Benoqua Lam Teto introduced us to Chong. I'll tell you national by Bifuna, and I'll tell you about national clan, and I need so he be old son of George, a public hearing assassinaz on the NCOP Makens, why it's the best staging, who tell you a long time, the MLO MEC, Nam Sakapo, who deputy minister, why it's a little like Mabasha, Lom Patis, or Bobabini by Chong. It, well, the city, let's meet and engage on the issue. Now, if by the phone, I better was going to go outside about John, when the Labanduana be to Bangamane, be kit nature, or can you be risky and of Baba Tat, as it transports and as I at me type by problem. Now, because the money sitting national, Kabanduana be to be Western Cape, Ababa Funda, Apa, Batala Clay Province, a petro ETA, in national, I petanga, Apa, ETA, pet up cities, I tell Abanduana be to go back to the rate payers, I lend out. Ten platon works of Patamas Ner and then don't for Abanduana Bay. So I tell in the Mayan say, came back by Oye, Abanduana Bay to Ayako Baroque, and he turned into a long parties. Long parties like a lunga langa for Lendau. In the one in Atu Mamelana. Kunini see Tela Quat twenty abuse, I can parties from over Umdong Mama Patnoco. It shall figure Mabam Fagan of Aklanda and go parties or MC will save time. But by a bam Fagan Apa, by a bam Suzakes, Mane Umdoza or Yabanduana Bay to Abanduana Bay to Basin like him. Abanduana Bay to Bazao Tata, Bazao Angis, Bazao Rach, Babula, a man is sitting a command. Say Tela Londo Toko T. Linko Kelly, say Tela Londo Mabanga Libelu Tati Fonizako, Mabaka Bale, your time has expired. Thank you. I see. I see the honourable members. There's too much. There's too much noise. Honourable Cavido, it is your opportunity. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, uh, Speaker. On the topic topic of ensuring the safety of learners to and from schools, initiatives such as the walking bus are commendable. However. 
it ought not to be expected that programs and initiatives implemented by our government are supposed to replace the work of police in our communities. That policing in our province is so severely under-resourced is a serious cause for concern. The SEPs themselves have openly admitted that increasing visible, visible policing goes a long way to ensuring that criminals think twice about committing acts of crime, not only on our children, but all members of society. That police number are said to be cut over time will inevitably not help to fight this battle. Leister prachtig en mooi. As more pressure will be placed on our already crippling criminal justice system. On the final point, every school forms part Finish of its community and is ever inevitably affected by challenges facing the community. And finally... Your time has expired. Thank you, Honourable Kavido. This is a complex... Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Members, please be guided by the speaking times. It's three minutes, two minutes, and there's even a one minute in between. Honourable Olivier, you have two minutes. Thank you. Ma Madam Speaker. But if, if you were just to be Madam calm, Speaker, we'd get through it. Thank Madam you. Madam Speaker, na aanleiding van wat ek gesê het, wil ek a aanbeveling maak. Ek wil nou nie net klaar nie maak, wil ek aanbevelings maak. Dat die minister ernstig moet kyk om met die nationale minister a gesprek te voer om te kyk om die beleid vir die voertuie van kinders na skole toe te kan, kan bespreek. En te kyk of ons die kilometers is die radius kan, kan verander, so dat kinders wat en meer specifiek kinders wat op plaaskole is, dat hy kinders op die vervoer of busse gelijk kan word om die, om die, om die rust te, uh, 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 te verminder. Dat is die eerste aanbeveling. Die tweede aanbeveling wat ek wil maak is dat hy ernstig moet kyk met die minister, met die MEC van Veiligheid om die safety begroting aan te pas. Dat hy begroting een beetje kan kyk of hulle nie meer programme kan het om kinders veiliger na by die skole te kry. En dis die tweede aanbeveling wat ons kan maak. En die derde aanbeveling wat ek wil maak aan die thea's om te kyk om ernstig te oorweeg. Om miskien die minister, die MEC van onderwijs, een beetje te skyf. En miskien iemand anders die geleend het gee om te kyk. Thank you, Honorable Olivier. Thank you. I now see the minister, Minister Schaefer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, thank you, Honorable Kibido, for those constructive comments. As usual, unfortunately, I cannot say the same about Honorable Olivier. Um, it seems that the ANC doesn't listen to the numerous inputs that I've made in this House regarding the, what we are doing about learner safety, which we shouldn't have to do if the police were doing their job. Now, as far as um, the, the members, article is concerned that you noise. refer to, I, there's nothing in here about what you mentioned in the question. But uh, as I said, we do have a relationship with SAPS, and we will continue to do so. But they must actually get on and do their job. Um, the fact of the matter is, um, we are the ones who care about children, and just and as the ANC, who's not accepting any responsibility for helping us with this task, and also politicising safety. Just yesterday, we saw the politicisation of a meeting of the National Police Minister Order, with the Bonte Yeovil community. With the political head of the SAPs acting in this manner, it shows what games are being played with the lives of our people. This very police minister was accused of tender irregularities in the police lease saga in 2012. Needless to say, no action was taken against him, and now he's been promoted to the political head of the very body that should be investigating him. So the fact of the matter is, we care about our children. To the ANC that is politicizing safety. As far as LTS is concerned, Madam Speaker, I cannot speak like this. Oh, sorry. Uh, Minister Schaefer, kindly take your seat, please. Members, you, interjections are allowed, but when it becomes a running commentary and it drowns out the speaker on the floor, I'm going to appeal to you to please allow the minister to continue. You may proceed, minister. You are protected. Thank you, Madam Speaker. They don't like hearing the truth because it hurts. The fact of the matter is we have spoken to the national minister on many occasions about learner transport policy, about the quintile system, which is iniquitous and needs to change. The answer comes back all the time, there is no money. If the ANC had stopped wasting and stealing the money, there would have been plenty of money to do all of these things. And we're doing an unbelievably good job in trying to compensate in the education department for things that should be done by national government. Thank you. 
Honourable McAlaney. Uh, Honourable McAlaney. <laughs> We are all honourable members in this House, please. We now move to interpolation number two. Okay, now, when they're done, then we may proceed. Um, we cannot have a debate across the floor. It just doesn't work that way. You may proceed. I recognize the Minister of Economic Opportunities. I see Minister Wendy. Thank you very much, Speaker, and thank you very much to the Honourable Chacham for the uh, question. Sorry, um, Minister Wendy, kindly take your seat, please. Honourable Dianki. Can I please uh, ask the MEC a question, please? Um, kindly take your seat, please. Just a question before you Honourable Dianki, take your seat, please. Minister Wendy, will you take a question? No. no. Last time he Min uh, eventually gave him the question, he didn't even have a question. Okay, thank you. Honourable Yankee, the, the Minister has said no, accept that now and behave. Thank you. Speaker, the question from the Honourable Chacham, thank you very much. If I had to answer the question directly, what, has, what role has my department played in farm evictions, I would just say none. But it is a very serious issue, so I thank him for bringing this issue, and I'm going to ask, answer it differently because, first of all, A, all illegal and legal evictions are dealt with in accordance with specific processes per the Extension of Security of Tenure Act, ESTA, 62 of 1997. These processes are the mandate of the National Department of Rural Development and Land Reform and administered as such by them. This department maintains the database of all evictions pertaining to agri-workers and farm dwellers. B. The Western Cape Department of Agriculture's sub-program Farm Worker Development assists evicted farm workers through the facilitation of access to appropriate departments and municipalities through its referral system. This process, as and when my department is made aware of such cases, um, this sub-program also focuses on various strategic projects geared towards social upliftment and the development of agri-workers. But perhaps, Speaker, to go a little bit further, and I, maybe just a word of caution to the Honourable Chacham. Last time we went to, into election, there was a different spokesperson on agriculture within the ANC, and he's been given this job. My word of caution is we are moving into an election, and I wouldn't make this an election uh, uh, campaign or election process, because last time we tried to make it an election campaign, and the, dep the president, current president was the deputy president there. He ordered this investigation. You know this investigation. The documents came out, and guess what happened after the documents came out? We held meetings in De Duins and in Drakenstein, and then they buried this document. Yeah. They buried it very deep. Because quite frankly, when you start looking at the top 10 eviction hotspots by municipality across province, Guess which province is the top in the country? The Free State. Guess which province is the second in the country? KwaZulu Natal. Who runs these provinces? Minister Wendy, your time and of course, has expired. When we started to look at these numbers, then it became a big issue. But this your is a serious report. Minister Wendy. Preliminary, sorry. preliminary report for the ministerial fact finding mission. Thank you. Your time has expired. Sorry, thank you. Honourable Dianke, allow me to be the presiding officer, Asablif. Um, if you don't mind. Uh, speaker. Uh, sorry, Honourable Chacham, you have a member speaking. If you could just help me. No, he's speaking about uh, Nalkara. Speaker. You may proceed, Honourable yeah. Chacham. Speaker, I think for today, we would want really the MEC to prove his worth. If he really wants to be the premier, it, it, it's not the first time, prim, premier candidate, that you said, let's give us, let's give us the the name. Order, please. Member Gondo gave you the name of Simondian, of people that were evicted here in this house. We are expecting you to say, what have you done? For those people, I know, I Honourable know that Janky. 
you have challenges of, if, of even accounting about your agricultural department. We know that's your challenge. But let's, today we are saying we are giving you a chance to prove your worth, to be a premier. You know, today I'm, I'm giving you another one, another farm. <laughs> <laughs> Low crop farm in Tidorens. Uh, Normandy farm in Tidorens. And we have raised these things before the fight happened on, on Tuesday. And the violence on Tuesday is because of this. It's because of this. And of course, you know who owns the farm. That's why you were asking. That's why you were, you were asking me when I spoke to you on Tuesday. Member Siazi, can you help me to intervene here? We will help you. Oh, OK, no, that, that, that's fine. Yes, play it here. That's fine. Play it here. The point, what, what you are raising, what you are raising, uh, MEC, the lives of people and the children women in particular are in danger. We can't be taking and say this issue national must intervene. What is your program to assist our people? Particularly now in this cold, wet weather. You know, our people need assessment. Even if they don't vote for you at some stage, or if they vote for you at some stage, it's but it's our people, it's government, government must lead. Show us your worth if you want to be the premier. <laughs> Continue. And you have, for instance, in Normandy farm, where people are being chucked out because of not paying 200 of the rental. And yet, the conditions of those houses are not worth that 200. And what they do, they evict people and then employ Honourable foreign Tatsang, nationals. Your time is expired. And this Please puts finish. in danger the foreign nationals that are here to improve their lives. Thank you, Honourable Chacha. I now see the Honourable Member Schaefer. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I think really my colleague on the other side, um, as uncomfortable as it is, we can't deny that evictions have a devastating consequence for families involved. So let's just put that aside. It's not a pretty state of affairs, and I think that we have to really acknowledge what the real problems are, and the ministers highlighted this, Member Chacha. Firstly, it's failed government policy, because the extension of security of tenure, don't say it's a secondary, uh, it's a secondary issue. So the security, extension of security of tenure act and the Labour Tenants Act aim to provide a framework to deal with evictions and of land tenure reform program. The rights of farm dwellers are not protected by the law in this country. Why? Because while the policies have had good intentions, they failed to articulate a strategy around a long-term se uh, security please. for farm dwellers in the long term. So tenure legislation in this country is weak. You Sorry. fail to enforce it. Honourable, you fail to follow up on issues. That's Schaefer, where the problem starts. Kindly take your seat, please. Honourable Janky. Remember to speak through you. That member that is speaking. Can she speak through you? I will ask every member to speak. Um, <laughs> Honourable Macrosella, sorry, just allow me to get my... It is now. Are you rising on a point of order, sir? On a point sir? of order, uh, Speaker. Honourable Speaker, we would like to request your ruling here. A member must not point us. It's, it's wrong. We are honourable members, and you can't be doing this to us. Okay. We're not fighting here. If you could only just reflect on yourselves and the way you, in which you manage yourselves, this is actually quite scary. May we now proceed, members? Thank you. Please keep your fingers in your pockets. 
no finger pointing, and so they are all honourable members in this House. And honourable Dianki, I am the presiding officer. Yeah. You can understudy, but don't take over my role. Thank you. So, Speaker, you let's may take proceed. from the Act to really the reality. We have 124,000 agricultural workers in this province. This is the only province that has an agriculture worker household census, census that successfully went around and actually talked to people to find out what their living conditions are. Follow the rules. Member Schaefer, speak to me, please. Thank you. Yeah. So, really, Speaker, the point of the matter is that the law is there, but it's not actually being enforced. If there are illegal evictions, they must be enforced. That's what we always said. We have never defended illegal evictions. But the point of the matter is the law is there and it's not being enforced. That is where the problem is. This province has much more support services than any other province in this country. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I just want to... Excuse me. Sorry. Take your seat, please, Honourable Chacham. Sorry, Member Schaefer. Speaker, I just heard the words kicking in the streets. I'd like clarification exactly what Member Davis had said there. Sorry, Members. Members, can I? We are all honourable members. Let's let's act honourably. Um, you know, it, it, it is deeply disturbing that at the highest level we have fun and games. We are supposed to be leading this province, and we, every single person in this chamber, is a leader. And the behavior is appalling, quite frankly. You make jokes of something that is so serious. Now, I'm going to ask you all to manage yourselves with dignity and respect the House and the speakers when they speak. We cannot simply carry on like this. It's unacceptable behavior. So I'm speaking to both sides of the house, and I'm asking you for your cooperation, please. We have guests in the gallery. What do you think they believe and think when they leave here? This is not leadership. Please, members, manage yourselves. Thank you. You may proceed, Honorable Chacham. Thank you very much, Speaker. I think, Speaker, it's important to again remind uh, Member Schaefer, that our government here has three spheres. We are talking about local, province, and national. And all those spheres must take responsibility. Unless they don't understand cooperative governance. And then maybe I must meet with them outside to really workshop on this part. <laughs> so that they take responsibility of what they need to do, <laughs> Speaker. Because, because they know that there the, the are processes where nationals speak to province, and there are concurrences that takes place. And what we are saying here, that the minister, the MEC, must take that responsibility. We can't point up when we have problems here. Deal, you are part of the MinMEG there. Go and attend, deal with those issues at that level. But let's service our people in a manner that is dignified. We have a, a family there of uh, Ross van Valen. They are about 16 with their children in local farm. They are being evicted, all of them with their children. Do we go and now and go to Pretoria when we have a challenge here? We say, no, we can't go to Pretoria. Let's resolve and make sure our people, particularly in this cold weather of Cape Town and province in particular, let's just make sure that we assist uh, our people. Your time has expired, Honorable Chacham. Can we take your seat, please? I see the Honorable Member Schaefer. 
Speaker. I think um, the Honourable Member Chacham has workshopped himself out of Deputy, uh, Deputy Chief Whip. But really, the point of the matter, he didn't hear that. But the point is, really, I'd like to ask the Minister the following question. Does the Minister know whether there's been any ANC or EFF interference and encouragement of farm worker evictions? Thank you. I see the Honourable Chacham, your final shot. Honourable Chacham. Speaker, I just want to say, for now, or, or maybe I must ask also uh, Member Schaefer, if she knows these farms, she's the chairperson of that committee. Has she spent Sorry, Member David, the question was to Member Schaefer. her time visiting some of these farms? some of the families that we are talking about. Because since we have been raising this issue, and also in the committee we have raised some of them, but has she planned a program to do that? She does plan the program to, to, to call the banks and national to, to try and see if the banks will support their issues against Section 25. The banks are not supporting that. The banks are clear, and hence we are clear here, that let's deal with problems of our people, engage with the farm, farmers to stop retrenching and evicting our people. Because, as I said to you the other day, this is a time bomb. One fo foreign national has been murdered now. How many, if this problem persists, will, uh, are going to be murdered? Let's try and resolve those problems. And I'm not raising this because I'm opposition. I'm raising this because let's be human. Exactly. We have all signed an oath to serve our people here. Thanks. Thank you, Honourable Chacha. I see the Honourable the Minister, Minister Wendy. Thank you very much, Speaker. And thank you very much again for the Honourable Chacha for raising this issue. And I too assure you that I take this very, very seriously. I would like to, and I know you've raised two issues here, the Namonda farm and 16 family members evicted from a farm. Could I ask you to perhaps just send me the detail because I know that normally when they get raised in a house, I then follow up immediately, ask for the detail, and I don't always get the detail, but I'll get to that in a moment. So farm evictions are a very serious thing. So let's deal with what happens in the media. So the other day we saw lots of hype in the media around women on farms. So I went to their meeting in Simondium, where there are issues. I sat at that meeting, I made notes of everything that happened at the meeting. I uh, made notes of their survey where 75% of female uh, seasonal workers are not paid minimum wage. 72% of female seasonal workers not, have not had or do not have access to ablution facilities. And 69% of female seasonal workers have uh, having contact with pesticides. I then, uh, and then I haven't got time, obviously, in my two minutes to go through this whole report. I then met at that meeting with, Mrs., with Ms. Worries, with her issues, uh, with Bellevue Farm people and their issues, with Melanick Farm and their issues. And then, of course, I took it back to my farm worker support unit and asked them to intervene and wrote three letters to women on farms to say, I attended your meeting, I made a note of all these things, Please give me details of, first of all, how you get to these numbers and so that we can actually put a program of action to, in place to deal with this. To date, not one answer, not one. Then let's get to this legislature and people raising issues. I can assure you I take this seriously. The other day, we get raised in a debate, we get raised an issue about farm workers and it gets raised by the Honorable Davids. I take the issue. I also send her an email and say, please, will you give me further information? I get no reply. But I take what I picked up from Hansard, I take the name of the farm, and then I send the, the, the unit there. They go and do this. Here's the report of On Farm. Here's the people they interview on the farm. Here is the script of every interview of every person on the farm. This is what the farm worker support unit does. Here's the highlight of the issues raised at the end of it. Here are the photographs of what the farm used to look like, and here are the photographs of what the farm looks like now. Ablution facility. This is the kind of stuff. Now, this is what you raised. I then emailed you this report, along with your chief whip, 
to date. I still have had not a reply that you've received this report. I've said you raised the issue. We investigated. Minister this is Lindy, what we found. Where are the issues that you raise in this House? Because you raise them in the House for political reasons. I take this Thank job, Honourable Chacham, Thank you, very, Minister. very seriously. My department takes it very, very seriously. Honourable David's order. Minister so I've just Wendy. heard a further accusation Sorry. in this House. Sorry. I will send, I will, order, I will send them back again to this farm, but I ask the Honourable Member to please highlight for me where this no clean water is. Because read this report. It talks about clean water. It Minister Wendy, sorry, your time has expired. Kindly, um... Speaker, on this issue, yes, I cannot deal with Thank that you. kind of that kind of seriousness of this issue yeah. because that is pathetic. Yeah. But I will say to the Honourable Chacham, I take this very your seriously, time. and so does my department, Thank and we you, will Minister investigate Wendy. every issue that's raised here with us. Thank you, Mem Member Davids, may I ask if you wish to engage the minister that you do so after the sitting, but we can't continue a dialogue whilst we have a programme. That concludes interpolations. We now move to questions. And the first question is to the Honourable Minister. Minister, oh, where am I now? Sorry. Sorry, this question's to the Premier. I'm on the wrong page. Sorry, we, it's questions to the Premier, yeah. So we have 20 minutes for question, sorry, there's two questions. Yeah, my page is, sorry. There's two questions, the one is from the Honourable Magaka to Premier and the second one, so I now recognise the Honourable, the Premier. Thank questions you very much indeed, Honourable Madam Premier. Speaker. Firstly, I would like it noted that the province has rolled out broadband services to 1,895 sites so far. These sites include schools, hospitals, clinics, rural libraries, Cape Access Centres and corporate administrative offices. The Honourable Member will be reassured to know that we have managed to achieve our 100% milestone delivery target for Phase 1 of the broadband project despite the fact that the broadband rollout has been affected by delays in obtaining way leaves and building plan approvals from some municipalities and also delays in the installation of municipal power at regional broadband points of presence. But the most serious delay that we cannot resolve is the constant theft of infrastructure and technology. And even though fiber optic cable has no resale value, in some areas, it gets dug out as fast as we can put it in. Another major obstacle is that in certain areas, gang leaders have established some kind of feudal fiefdom over those areas, control those areas, and demand protection money from our contractors before our contractors can put in infrastructure. And of course, we will not be blackmailed in that way that is a criminal offence and we have to be assisted by the South African Police Service. Despite this, and these latter problems are problems we cannot resolve, but despite this, we have reached 100% of our targets. The province commenced with phase two of the broadband project on the 1st of October 2017. And during this phase of the project, the sites initially included in the broadband master list will be upgraded to network speeds which are 10 times higher than the network speeds delivered during phase one of the project, which means that all sites will eventually have 100 megs speed as compared to the current 10 megs for many. And the 50% milestone delivery target of 957 of these sites for phase two, that's 100 megs, is set to be achieved by the 30th of June, 2019. And we've already upgraded 617 of the 957 sites to the higher network speed. Consequently, the Broadband project is on track to achieve its first milestone delivery target for phase two, despite the delays. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I see the Honorable Magaka. Thank you, Honorable Premier. I just want to check, because you have raised a very important point here about the constraints that are confronting this development. 
uh, which is the theft of cables and the gangster-related kind of theft. I just want to check, because you have already identified the problem. What, what, what are you intending to do, or what are you doing in order to deal with this problem? Because it cannot be just allowed to continue. Because if it allowed to continue, it means there's no development which can be done by the department or by the government anyway. What, what, what are you intending to do, or what is, well, what is it that you are doing to deal with this theft and the gangster-related matters? Well, the two are related, but not entirely synonymous, Madam Speaker. Firstly, in places where we've had chronic theft of the infrastructure and the cabling, we've had to resort to Wi-Fi, that is, wireless connections. Now, wireless connections are all right, but if you want to have entire classes on the internet at the same time, and if you want to be doing live streaming or videos or things like that, you cannot do them sufficiently reliably on Wi-Fi. So we do have some connectivity on Wi-Fi, but certainly that's not enough for what we envisage for e-learning. So that's a partial solution. The solution that we found that is working quite well for our devices, because in our model schools, every child has a device. And the solution to the theft of the infrastructure in those schools, Madam Speaker, is to brand the devices so thoroughly that no one can scratch off or take off the branding. It is burnt in and embedded into the device. The other strategy that we've used to curb theft of devices is the capacity to switch it off and lock it down permanently at a distance. So that if a device is stolen, not only is it very clearly branded, but the minute we establish that it's gone, we switch it off and it's useless forever. So it's got no resale value whatsoever and no use value at all. And what we've been doing is holding parent meetings at every school to explain that these devices are useless, effectively useless, when they leave the school premises. Because we will close them down remotely and they will have no resale value and no value at all. Where we have a much bigger challenge is where the uh, cabling gets stolen and where gangs start threatening the infrastructure people. There are some places that the infrastructure installers just simply refuse to work in now because they say it's too dangerous and their lives aren't worth the risk. And I have a lot of sympathy with them. And for a long time, we used to ask the South African Police Service to go out and, in fact, ensure that they were protected in the installation of services. Now, if every single service team from the emergency medical services to the broadband installers to the refuse removals that go into certain areas have to have police protection, we'll have police doing nothing else in this province, given the police to population ratios that have already been discussed, Madam Speaker. So it is time for a culture of accountability to get right into our communities. I was in Lavender Hill the other day where together with the police, we have put a base camp in the middle of that community to deal with gangsterism. And as I'm speaking to the community there, I say, you know who the gangsters are. You know who Bogart and Chara are the names of the two big gangsters there. I said, you know who Bogart and Chara are. You even know where they are. Why don't you help the police get them? And the people say, we're not helping the police. That's not our job. We're not doing your job for you. Just like the Honorable David said right now when she said she wasn't going to do Minister Windy's job by answering the letters that he writes to her. So it's the whole attitude of unaccountability. Order. It is the entire attitude of unaccountability. It's not my problem. And therefore, when we can't lay broadband cabling in those communities because we cannot get past these gangsters, the community is not helping us, Madam Speaker, to track them down and to deal with them. 
So absent a culture of accountability of every individual in this society, it will be impossible for us to overcome these problems permanently. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Honourable Magaki, your second follow-up. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to check with the Premier if they do have a record, for example, on phase one. Do we have a record of the exact institutions where you have put that infrastructure and is operational. Because at some point uh, this year, I, I don't know whether the Honorable Kipido was present when we went to one of the schools in the West Coast where it was appear, supposed to have that infrastructure, but the principal and the staff of the school were not aware of the, any of that development. And we could not even pick up if there was the, anything of that. Do you have a sort of uh, list? Premier? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Yes, of course, we keep very close lists of every place that we install, and we've even put a lot of money into backup systems that can enable us to see from here, remotely, from the Center for E-Innovation, exactly which systems are down and which systems are up on any particular day. We've spent a lot of money seeing where the people are on the devices, what the speed is, of the connectivity going through and various other things. So we normally pick up and sometimes people even get called by the help desk before they realize that their own systems are down. I've also been to schools and I've gone to schools roughly every week for many, many weeks now to go and look at how the system is working on the ground. And I also went to a school in the West Coast which was supposed to have the connectivity and didn't. Um, and I went there to take a very close look at why and what the problem was. And there were several problems, including cable theft, including line of sight problems and various others. But I'm grateful to say they have been fixed. And if the Honorable Magatla goes to any schools or any places and finds that people think they should have connectivity but don't, or should have connectivity but don't know about it, could he please let me know immediately and I will take instant action. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Can we move on to the next question? Second question, Honourable Gaka, again to the Premier. I see the Premier. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Conradi Better Living Model Game Changer is pioneering a new method of housing delivery where the state is enabling its land, in this case a 22 hectare site close to the Cape Town CBD, to be utilised for integrated mixed use development, of which 1,800 will be subsidized units to make them more affordable to people who otherwise would not be able to buy any residential unit in that location. The total construction cost will come to 3.4 billion rand and will catalyze the upgrading of the surrounding roads infrastructure and public transport and bring new social services to the neighboring communities. The Western Cape government has had a dedicated team working hard to ensure that we break ground on this project still in 2018. The primary focus has been going through the required legal steps to ensure the site can be developed. This includes having to comply with onerous rezoning requirements and following lengthy public participation processes at various stages of the project. At the same time, the team have also focused on securing adequate subsidy funding and compiling the exhaustive procurement documentation required to release the site for devel development by the private sector. In reality, it is actually more difficult for the state to deliver development projects than it is for the private sector, yet the burden is on government to deliver affordable housing. Despite all of these complexities, the development is on track to break ground at the end of 2018, and we believe the Conradi Better Living Model can serve as a blueprint for future government housing projects. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Honorable Dugmore. Um, Deputy Speaker, I'd like to ask a follow-up question. Um, this isn't the first time, Honourable Premier, that commitments have been made that ground will be broken. Um, MEC Marigizela, as well as MEC Grant, announced that ground would be broken in 2017. That didn't happen. You have now once again announced publicly that ground will be broken before the end of this year. Um, can you be m much more specific? What are the specific steps that need to be completed that ground, that construction will physically start. You referred to a process of objections, but can you outline to this House what needs to happen from now until the end of the year so that indeed ground can be broken? Premier? Uh, the Honourable um, Deputy Speaker, uh, 
I don't generally regard the Honourable Doug Moore as a reliable source of what my colleagues on this side of the House have said and when they have said it. And if, and if the Honourable Grant and the Honourable Madikizela said any such thing, I would like to see it in writing before I accept the word of the Honourable Doug Moore. Order. Order, Honourable Gillian. Just one second, Premier. Honourable Gillian. Deputy Speaker, what is the Premier trying to do uh, to cast this person on a member here? Order. I will, I will have a look at that, but the Premier can continue with his reply. All I was doing was I was saying I'm not regarding the Honourable Doug Moore as a reliable source of quotes of my Premier, you may proceed, Premier. Good. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. <coughs> there has been one delay, and that was from the middle of this year to the end of this year, and that arose out of highly complex technical problems in terms of the requirements for the rezoning and the repeated public participation processes, and we had to go out again for a call for proposals around those details. So those have all been done and looked at very carefully. And we are planning to break ground before the end of the year, towards the end of the year, but before the end of the year. And the, and the Honourable Dugmore expects me to go through a list of what can go wrong so that the Honourable ANC can make sure they do go wrong. I absolutely know what goes on on the other side. So let me say, Honourable Deputy Speaker, that I can give a couple of things that could still go wrong, but I'm not going to tempt fate by giving that checklist to the Honourable the Opposition in this House. Thank you. Thank you. Can we proceed? Honourable Dugmore, second opportunity. Um, thank you, uh, um, Deputy Speaker. Um, could I ask if the Premier was provided with information where her MECs have actually committed to certain dates and have not achieved these dates, what will the action um, be that she will actually take um, in regard to broken promises? You yourself if I can remind the um, promise of Children's Commission in 2009, we still don't have one. Your MECs have promised uh, Prime Minister. So can you please say what action you will take? Honourable uh, Premier. I think, I think, I think, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Order. I think, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the intervention by the Honourable Doug Moore now makes it very clear why I don't take his accounts of who promised what seriously. Because I have answered a question in this House repeatedly about how circumstances have changed since 2009 relating to the Children's Commissioner. There are no excuses. There are no excuses. When the circumstances and the facts change, sensible, rational people change their position. And there are no excuses. Things change, and people who are rational don't stick to positions that become obsolete with changing circumstances. So, Mr. Order. Deputy Speaker, if the Honourable Doug Moore submits those quotes to me, I will study the context, and I will study the context in which they were made, and I will study how circumstances changed and why they changed, and if indeed they did make those statements, there may be an entirely rational explanation that has got nothing to do with broken promises and the spin that the Honourable the Opposition is trying to put onto this. Honourable Dugmore, you Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Is the Premier um, happy with the Black Empowerment um, uh, set-asides for this particular Conradi project, both in regard to the project team, as well as in regard to the procurement of services of, of the construction companies. Are you satisfied with that? Like Deng Xiaoping, Deputy Speaker, I don't mind if a cat is black or white as long as it catches mice. And if, and if, for example, if, for example, the Honourable Dugmore is trying to raise quibbles now that will cause an extra delay so that he can accuse us again of breaking promises or pushing out deadlines. It's not going to work. 
My answer to him is that I don't get involved in procurement processes. I know the procurement process stick with the law, and I know that the law will have been complied with, and I haven't gone to look as to who's got those contracts and what is happening. We follow due process of procurement in this government. Thank you. Your last opportunity, Honourable Dagmar. Um, thank you. Is that an admission that the Premier doesn't actually <coughs> care whether there is um, black economic empowerment in this uh, Conradi development? Is that an admission that she doesn't actually care whether or not black contractors have been empowered? Order. Order. I'll tell you what I do care about, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I. Order. Allow the Premier to proceed. I wonder when the Honourable the Opposition is going to hold their Congress and whether they will elect a black cat or a white cat to lead them. I hope they can elect someone who can actually lead them for a change. That might help. Order. Order. Allow the, order. Order. Allow the Premier now to continue and to finish off. Good luck to the white cat Doug Moore in that particular caucus, because the white cat honourable, the white honourable Doug Moore, order, order, the honourable white cat Doug Moore is trying to polish his black marble to give himself a chance at the Congress of the ANC. That's why he's doing this. That's why he's raising these questions. Order, order, honourable Kalini. Order. I take it that order. I take it that black cat is somewhere on the grounds of Conradi Hospital. No, it's in the peanut butter. <laughs> Premier, you may proceed. Deputy Speaker, in all seriousness now, I care very deeply about getting affordable housing for poor people, and that is what we're aiming to do through this project, and we will not have gold deflection. Thank you. We then move on to the next question. Uh, question number one, standing over from Thursday 13. Honourable Christians to Minister Schaefer. I see Minister Schaefer. Order, order, please come to order now. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, um, and to the member for the question. Um, answer to part A um, is that in 2016-17 there were 11 cases reported, and the second part in 2017-18 there were 15 cases reported. Um, question uh, part B, 2016-17, eight employees were formally charged with misconduct, all eight were dismissed. In three cases there was insufficient evidence to charge, and in 2017-18, Five employees were formally charged, three were dismissed, one received a final written warning, and one matter is still pending. In the remainder of cases, there was either insufficient evidence to charge or the employees resigned before disciplinary steps could be instituted. Thank you. Honourable Christians. Thank, thank you, Minister. Just a, a follow-up question on that. Were there any of those uh, staff members or of those people that were not dismissed a second offender in, this, in any of these cases? I honestly cannot tell you the answer to that question. Um, we, that's a new question. Honourable Christians, your second opportunity. Okay. Um, because, because my question was, if it, if it was, or if they, they were second offenders, why were they not removed the first time? Uh, uh, but the, the, the other question is, those learners, were they, what counselling were they offered, if any? learners who are uh, who report um, sexual abuse are given access to um, counseling in the department they have they can uh, contact the safe schools helpline if the matters are dealt with at schools there is a process that needs to be followed in terms of the abuse no more protocol um, which should have happened in all those cases are we uh, can we proceed we proceed to the next question question five standing over honorable gopi to honorable shaver I see Minister Schaefer. Thank you. 
Deputy Speaker, and to the member for the question again, uh, the answer to the question is that the 486 Primary School is a new school with a, multi a purposed multimedia centre library classroom. The WCED does, therefore does not have plans to build a new library or because there is already one there. An ordinary classroom currently used for learners with special needs will be made available to the grade three learners currently occupying the media uh, centre or library. Um, they are using that at the moment. Um, at the start of 2019, the LCN intervention will be relocated to a suitable facility at Darling Large School, as the school does not have a purposed LCN facility. The Media Centre Library will then be used as a library. Honourable Gopi. Um, so the Minister um, realised that um, that school was built too small for that community and, uh, and for those reasons that community had to make a plan to accommodate since uh, the next option is in Marmersbury which is uh, 40 kilometres away from them. Thank you. Deputy Speaker, um, the school was built without an Elson unit when, it, when an Elson unit was needed, and it was also built without a hall because it was part of the national government DB, uh, DBE's CD program, who refused to include those items in the building of a school. So the WCED had to build a hall, which we've done, and unfortunately, we couldn't also build the Elson Centre. But it's, it's not a standard item in the DBE's CD program, unfortunately. Honourable Gopi, your second opportunity. Uh, Deputy <coughs> Speaker, um, and when is the plan to build a high school for for my, um, for Darling? It's a new question, Deputy Speaker. Um, if can please be submitted separately. The reason, Deputy Honorable Speaker. Gopi. The reason, Deputy Speaker. Order. The reason, Deputy Speaker, is that. Um, if the minister um, realised that they have also accommodated high school kids there. Now, when the department noticed that there is a need, uh, did the department discuss when are they are going to provide them with a high school? Thank you. Remember, the question is clear. Honourable Minister, if you want to respond. It is a new question, but I'll answer the question in general. As uh, um, the ANC would know, because we've been raising this at a national level for the last four years, the money that comes into the Western Cape is not nowhere near sufficient to provide for the needs of the learners in the Western Cape. Just this year alone, we have 25,000 additional learners in the system where the money does not follow them into the province. So we make many plans and we have... So we make many plans to accommodate learners, um, and unfortunately those plans often have to be changed uh, because we simply do not have sufficient resources um, as, a, as part of the provincial equitable share to provide for all the needs in the province. We've raised this many, many times. We raised it, in fact, with the president last week. And uh, unless we get more money, we aren't going to be able to provide all the needs for all the learners at the time we would like to. Thank you. Can we move on to the next question? Question number 10, Honourable Ice to Minister Mayer. Minister Mayer. Thank you, Honourable uh, Deputy Speaker, and thank you to Honourable Member for this question. As at the end of 30 June 2018, published in the Provincial Gazette, it was an extraordinary gazette, dated 30 July, the aggregate capital expenditure amount to 8.07 billion rand, or 69.5 percent of the adjusted capital budget of 11.61 billion rand. The preliminary uh, outcomes suggest spending trends across all municipalities in the province. However, these outcomes are subject uh, to change with the year-end accruals and the finalization of the audited financial statements. I have before me, Honorable Deputy Speaker, a table of the and a breakdown of the underspending of the capital budget as to 30 June 2018, based on the preliminary outcomes of the respected municipalities. Honourable Deputy Speaker, it is worth mentioning that three of them have expenditure on uh, capital expenditure above 90%. That is the Cape Winelands Municipality, 
Wittenberg Municipality and Beaufort West Municipality. In addition, there are eight of these municipalities across the Western Cape that have capital expenditure above 80 per cent. There's a further nine of these municipalities that have spent uh, above 70 uh, per cent of, on their capital budget. Honourable Deputy Speaker, uh, also uh, the table which I'm happy to submit to the Honourable Member also indicate the various spendings on the various specific projects detailing the underspending in certain specific municipalities, which, as I have to mention, is still subject to the annual audit outcome process. The second part of the question, Honourable Deputy Speaker, is also important to note that the provincial <coughs> treasury and the, my colleague, the Minister of Local Government, we have put together part of our oversight responsibility, monitor also the capital performance of the budget, uh, through the Section 71 reports of the ministers in place to monitor the top 10 infrastructure projects in every single municipality in this province. Also, Honourable Deputy Speaker, in order to improve the capital expenditure on municipalities, both my department and the Provincial Treasury has now also agreed to set up a Municipal Capital Finance Expenditure Forum to establish also a process to plan and how to assess further particularly struggling municipalities in affecting their capital uh, programs. This, Honourable Deputy Speaker, forum to monitor the capital expenditure will meet also uh, tomorrow. Honourable Deputy Speaker, I think also subsequent to this, we also know that whenever there is an underspending on any capital projects, there are a number of reasons for that. One is the rollover, because capital projects are multi-year projects. We also know, Honourable Deputy Speaker, that many of these projects that are funded through the national conditional grants are also multi-year projects. It starts always with the first phase, with a conceptualization phase, and then that particular phase you don't automatically spend because you are busy with the conceptual designs. Beyond that, Honourable Deputy Speaker, in the capital outline of a project, you also then subsequently look at the development when architects and quantity surveyors and contractors are looking at the further design and the feasibility studies that leads up to that. Thirdly, Honourable Deputy Speaker, unlike the ANC that spends all the money up front, they, they spend the capital budget when people are still thinking about the project and there's nothing left. This government does proper conceptual design, proper feasibility studies, proper feasibility studies, proper design, and then we spend the infrastructure. So, Honourable Deputy Speaker, I'm happy that when there are particular underspending in some of these municipalities, they have approached the provincial treasury, and we are in the process to consider whether these projects need to be further rolled out in terms of the application for rollover spending, especially since capital projects are multi-year projects. Thank you, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Honourable Ace. Deputy Speaker, Deputy Speaker, the MEC referred to the <coughs> 8 billion rand that's been spent in the last financial year on capital by municipalities. The question was very clear. What did they not spend? What was the underspending? And Honorable Deputy Speaker, the underspending was 3.6 billion rand in one year by 30 municipalities. And the question is really, what did they not do? And we won't know what they did. They didn't burn houses, there's no infrastructure, there's no sewage. There's nothing happening in the poorest of the poor. And I ask again the MEC, MEC, what was the 3.6 billion rand supposed to buy for the people of the Western Cape? Please answer the time. Speaker, we know that I have indicated in my answer that 69% of that particular budget was spent. I've also indicated he, can, he should know what is the under expenditure in that particular, but we know you have answered it yourself. Why? You have answered it. And I am not going to, I am not going to entertain you. Order. And so, Honourable Deputy Speaker, what really matters, what really matters here is do we have systems in place to monitor expenditure on infrastructure? And the answer is yes. Honourable Deputy Speaker, what also matters is that there are eight municipalities that spent above 80 per cent of the expenditure. They are West Coast, spending train of 86 per cent, Berg River 83 per cent, 
Overstrain 86%, Swellendam 81%, Mossel Base 85% of the capital budget has been spent, Outswaran 83%, Pito 82%, Central Karoo 80%. Honourable Deputy Speaker, there are nine of the various municipalities that have spent there for above uh, 70 per cent. What we are seeing, Honourable Deputy Speaker, in terms of the various trends across the Western Cape, 20 out of the 30 municipalities in the Western Cape have spent more than 70 per cent on the budget on capital expenditure. That is what matters in this particular case. Order, Honourable Yankee. Back, Deputy Speaker, just answer the question. Which municipalities underspend? Which municipalities underspend? Please name these municipalities that underspend. That's the first part of the question. Don't be all over. Yes. Any of them? Uh, since there are no ANC municipalities here left. Order. Well, I have. There are no. The Honourable Deputy Speaker, I am disappointed in both of them. Because you. Because both of them. Both of them were MECs, but they have no clue of how the expenditure budget works of a municipality. And Honourable Deputy Speaker, there's a reason why they ask this question here. There is a reason why they ask that question here. Because they have failed in the oversight in the municipalities where they should ask the questions in the first place. That's why they're asking it. Honourable Deputy Speaker, where there was underspending, Honourable Deputy Speaker, right, right, lecture, workshop, chat up. Order, order. I think, uh, no, it's not arrogance, it is workshop. Honourable Deputy Speaker, order, Honourable Makaleni. The workshop is clear. The workshop is clear. We have tabled in this House, Honourable Deputy Speaker, we have tabled Order. in this. But in, I'm answering the question. Order, we Minister, just one second. Order. Before I see Honourable Yanki, the the noise, noise level in the House is too high. Honourable Yanki, is it a point of order? I rise on relevance here, Deputy Speaker. I've asked a very simple, specific question, which should not take three minutes to answer or to get to. Yes, it's very simple. Your, your point is clear. Um, the chair cannot interfere in the minister's response, but the minister, is, minister will hopefully get to the, to the reply that you're looking for. Minister, you may proceed. No. I've got a list. I'm happy to supply the list in this house. And I will table this list of those underspending because, honourable deputy speaker, these two honourable members were MECs. And they failed in their duties, and that's why they were unelected. Where this matters, the underspending of the various municipalities was tabled in a gazette in this house, and each one of you had received a copy. So I am not going to do your reading work. That is the purpose of a workshop. Order, order. I saw the Honourable Ace first. Honourable Ace. <coughs> Honourable Deputy Speaker, it's very clear the MEC don't want to account. Like yesterday, he didn't attend the Standing Committee on Finance. That's why we must ask it here, Honourable Deputy Speaker. But Honourable Deputy Speaker, let the MEC answer us. Let the MEC tell us why there was no desalination plants built. Why Atlantis Aquifer and the Cape Flats Aquifer was not done. Tell us why Zanfleet was not done. Tell us why the 87 million rand for landfill sites was not spent. Tell us why 100 million rand in George municipality was not spent. Tell us why the infrastructure for the My City extension was not done. That's under your watch, Honourable MEC, and you're ducking and diving and not Order. taking accountability. Honourable, Order. Honourable Deputy Speaker, the answers for the underspending was tabled in a gazette in this House. And I am happy in the spirit of accountability. I'm happy to submit the full report that was submitted in this House in terms of this. But I'll answer the question. The, I'm happy to do so. Honourable Deputy Speaker, there was only a 48% spending in Lanesburg, 
There was also underspending in uh, also underspending in 46 uh, percent in uh, overstrength. So I have the figures, and I'm happy to table the report in this house, which, as the honourable member know, was tabled in a gazette. And I am happy, honourable deputy speaker, in the spirit of accountability, to supply the member a full list of the underspending. Thank you. We move on then to the next question, which is question three of the new questions. Honourable I to Minister Grant. I see Minister Grant. Deputy Speaker, thank you to the, for the question from the Honourable Ace. The reply to it is that the South African National Roads Agency, SANREL, is the road authority of the Huguenot Tunnel. tunnel. SANREL indicated in conversations with my department that they plan to do maintenance work to the tunnel. No formal indications have been given by SANREL as to what measures they are going to introduce to ensure traffic flow during their maintenance contract. Honourable Ace. Uh, Honourable Deputy Speaker, Honourable MEC, as the MEC for Transport and Public Works, is it not your responsibility when you learned of this in July this year to actually stay to Sanral to say to the National Minister, Minister, there's a possibility of a crisis emerging in the Western Cape. So let's sit around the table and let's solve this problem. What did you do as MEC of Transport and Public Works in this province? Minister Grant. Speaker, as I said, we, we are aware, but obviously the road authority, which is Sanral in the area, has been involved in discussions with my officials and we need them to seek the solutions. This is their part of the road. And obviously there are going to be implications for the roads around, but we have no plan yet from Sanrel in, in, in order that we need to plan around their plan. So until such time as we know what their plans are, then we will respond. There is no crisis. Can we move on, Honourable Ace? Oh, no. Order, order, Honourable Ace, second question. Honourable, Honourable Deputy Speaker, Honourable MEC, why are you following the same trend as all your colleagues, including the Premier and Frontier? Once there's a crisis, whether it's a crime crisis, whether it's any other problem in the Western Cape, you sit back. You say, let them come with the answers. You, the MEC, for the Western Cape. You said yourself, and, and now you must answer me on this one. Did you not say the traffic will come to a standstill? You said that. In the Western Cape, if it does happen. But now you sit back, I hear that honourable member saying, oh, it's only next year. Order. It, you can't do that. And I'm asking you now, do you commit yourself that you will engage and do something to rectify and re remedy this problem? Thank you, member. Honourable Grant. Deputy Speaker, once we know what their plan is, we will plan around it. The traffic may come to a standstill in the tunnel, but obviously there's got to be a plan B to reroute that traffic, and then we will put that into, into play. Honourable, Honourable Deputy Speaker, I can't understand this. We have a political office bearer that's responsible. That's engaging with the National Minister. Now you say my officials has been in discussion. This is not building a pavement in front of a house. This is a major problem. You as a politician must be involved. And we want that commitment from you today. Minister Grant, if you want to respond to that. Everybody speaking up particularly. We then move on to the next question, which is question four. Honorable Ace to uh, Minister Mayer, Minister of Finance. Honourable Deputy Speaker, thank you. As again at the 30th June this year, published in a provincial gazette, uh, 7964, dated 30 July, the total outstanding business debtors, that's commercial consumers, owed to the municipalities in the province amounts to 2.31 billion rand. Honourable Ice. Honourable Deputy Speaker, I would have expected the MEC to really follow this through. 
there's number B, what caused this and what measures have he been introduced to resolve this? He can't stand up only, Deputy Speaker, and say there's a debt of 2.3 billion rand to municipalities, bankrupting municipalities, undermining service delivery, and he's not saying what he's doing. So please, MEC, answer. Minister? As for that second part of the question, firstly, the uh, 2.3 billion rand is out of a total of 11.8 billion total indebtedness, and this is certainly a very serious matter that also needs the attention of this government. Also, Honourable Deputy Speaker, out of this uh, 2.3 billion rand, we have a 50, uh, 58.7 that falls within the 30-year uh, uh, category, which is the current debtors, and 5.3% falls within the 31 to 60 days category, and 2.9% falls within the 30 to 90 day categories. Also, Honourable uh, Deputy Speaker, in terms of what we are uh, currently doing and what have caused this particular matter, I think it is important to note that the most significant <coughs> income source uh, contributing to the total debt are water services and property rates in electricity. An amount of 4 billion rand is owed to water services with debt owed for property rates also constitute 2.13 billion of the total debt. Now, Honourable Deputy Speaker, in terms of what is the uh, reasons for some of this, we know that there is a constrained fiscal environment as expressed by both the national and the provincial medium-term budget policy statements, also the implementation of the drought and punitive tariffs, coupled with the increased high unemployment levels and the rise in poor households indigents as you will know, is on the increase also not only here but countrywide, and some of them also in, uh, impact negatively on consumer demand. And when there's a negative implication on consumer demand, it has an impact on the local businesses, and as many of these businesses are also experiencing some uh, trouble. In the context of what we are trying to do, uh, in terms of what are the activities that we're trying to do, we try in addition to provide ongoing support two municipalities, both in terms of the revenue masterclass, the domestic resource mobilization, which includes improving also the socioeconomic intelligence via the <coughs> MERO and the PERO, and also we also provide the socioeconomic uh, profiles to each municipality, but in addition to what we are doing to support municipalities with this debt is also on-site uh, support, particularly uh, with tariff modeling and annual uh, revenue masterclass to empower municipalities with practical and operational information on how best to perform the local government revenues to, to cushion the financial constraints. Also, in addition, what are we doing to dealing with this out huge outstanding debt uh, from particularly the businesses to municipalities? Uh, we are currently busy with uh, debt agreements between municipalities and businesses. Uh, we are also supporting the through the Department of Local Government and Provincial Treasury, where we assist municipalities also with uh, debt policies and debt agreements. And in some places, we have been uh, supporting municipalities uh, in terms of facilitating debt agreements uh, to some of these business <coughs> institutions. Honourable Ace. Honourable Deputy Speaker, what we heard here today is very shocking. We heard about debt agreements and we heard about constrained fiscal environment. So what the MEC is actually saying is business can't pay and, and let's just accept that. And this is unacceptable. The normal households, the normal people out there, their electricity gets cut, their water gets cut, but you say let's find an agreement with business. It's unacceptable, MEC, and it's not good enough. Tell us, please, who's the big companies? And let's take for argument's sake the city of Cape Town that's not paying what they're supposed to the municipalities. If business don't pay, Where's the burden going to be? It's going to be on households. And it's unacceptable that you give the excuse of fiscal constraint to, for businesses not Order. to pay. Minister. Honourable Deputy Speaker, I think it is important to note that there are households experiencing severe uh, stress, and that's absolutely correct. But similarly, businesses also experience uh, some stress. And in both cases, we are facilitating a support and agreements. Not only uh, we are supporting, we are supporting these uh, municipalities with tariff settings. We are supporting these uh, municipalities with. But also, it is not only 
businesses and individuals. We are also monitoring organs of state that also have negative impact on the debt of municipalities. And in that particular regard, we've also established a, a debt management committee to, to order to coordinate also the debt that we owe as a government and other government institutions to the various municipalities. There are also individual uh, efforts done by these various municipalities in order to collect these particular money from these commercial institutions. Honourable Oes. Honourable, Honourable Deputy Speaker, I don't understand. The question was businesses. The Honourable MEC is jumping to households, and that's, that's fine, he can do that. But what we ask is, Honourable Deputy Speaker, 2.3... Order, order, 2 order. 2.3, Honourable Deputy Speaker, billion rand outstanding by businesses, and he's not coming up with one single solution by saying, well, let's sit back. They're going to bankrupt municipalities. They're going to really let municipalities not deliver, e deliver even to households and themselves. It's not good enough, uh, uh, Honourable MEC. Deputy Speaker, MEC, please tell us who's the biggest companies and what are you doing to address it? Thank you, Honourable Rose. Honourable Minister. In terms of who is the biggest companies, that information I don't have with me now, but I'm happy to bring it to the House. Order the last opportunity. Honourable Rose. Honourable Deputy Speaker, what the MEC was saying here, and also in the previous question, that, they, that they're doing something, not, they're not doing anything. The department is really in a major collapse. And I want to know, if you want to address this honourable MEC, at least you must know who's the biggest company is at default. At least the one, two, three, four, get, five. Get to your question. But you can't tell us. You don't want to tell us. That's the reason. Order. There's no reply necessary for that. We move on to the next one. Question five, Honourable Kividu to Minister Plato. I see Minister Plato. Honourable Deputy Speaker, and, and also to the member, thank you for the question. Uh, the case will appear in court 12th of October. Thank you. Order, thank order. you, MEC Plato. Would you be so kind to supply, uh, uh, provide me with the names of the suspects, please? Um, I can do that, Deputy Speaker. The names did appear in the newspapers already. Um, Mr. Raves, Mr. Layer, and Mr. Prince. Honorable Kivida. Thank you, uh, MEC Plato. The um, uh, amounts, uh, the... Uh, the uh, murders and, 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 and shootings related to those guns smuggled by Nicholas Prinslow, Colonel Nicholas Prinslow, at this very moment as we're sitting here, is standing on 1,029. With two suspects still at large, can we safely <laughs> assume or preempt that we are dealing here with a mafia-styled a criminal syndicate. Minister? It sounds like a Deputy Speaker, but with a court case around the corner, I think uh, it would be advisable to, to wait for the outcome and for the deliberations at court. My department's watching briefs team will be at court to follow the proceedings. Maybe some other information might be come to light uh, during the court hearing as well. I will give it a last. Uh, thank you, MEC. Uh, Colonel Nicholas Prince before he was sentenced, ended into a plea bargain, and he was handed down a 12-year sentence. Uh, given the circumstances around this whole case, uh, can we assume that he may be uh, freed on parole at a certain stage? sooner or later? Um, that is, I can't tell that, but that is how the system works. You serve um, a portion of your term in jail, in his case 12 years, he might serve six, seven years, and then come up for parole. That might happen. Thank you. We move on to the next question. Uh, question six and seven will stand over in the absence of Minister Bradell. Move on to question eight. Honourable Lecker to Minister Plato again. Honourable Deputy Speaker, thank you, and also to the member for, for the question. 
The head of department chairs the Prof. Joint Anti-Gang Priority Committee, which was established to develop and coordinate a provincial response to the national anti-gangsterism strategy. The following government departments are represented on Prof. Joints, the Department of Community Safety, the City of Cape Town, the Department of Correctional Services, Department of Social Development, Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, National Prosecuting Authority, South African Police Services, the State Security Agency, and the Western Cape Education Department, and also the Western Cape Department of Culture, Sports, and, and Arts. The department has prioritized the accreditation and support of neighborhood watches in gang-affected areas, provide them with additional training and resources. The Department of Community Safety conducts its youth safety and religious program uh, in conjunction with faith-based organizations during the June, July, December, January holiday period. This initiative of the department was established to create a safe environment for children and youth during school holidays. Priority is given to areas with a high prevalence of gang activity and violence. During the June, July 2018 school holidays, the department funded 146 <coughs> projects with a total investment of 2,2 million rand. The total number of youth reached was in the region of 10,000. Key to the implementation of, of the gang strategy is the effective functioning of CPFs, which the department continued to support through the expanded partnership program. The department collates all relevant information about the fun functionality of CPFs in gang ridden areas and forward this, this information to the Provincial Commissioner of Police on a monthly basis. The department's court watching briefs program prioritizes the monitoring of court cases, uh, specifically gangster and drug related court cases. The most common reasons for cases being removed from the court role are the failure by SAPS to secure the docket at court, failure to timelessly finalize the investigations, failure to finalize the investigations within a reasonable time frame, where post-mortem reports, forensic drug reports, and blood alcohol reports are outstanding, and failure to subpoena witnesses to court timelessly. At gang stations in 2017-18 financially, cases for the following offenses were removed from the court of murder, attempted murder, possession of unlicensed firearms, dealing in drugs, and possession of drugs. And through the court was in briefs, many, many of these cases was put back onto the court roll. We continue to support our neighborhood watches with training. We continue to structure walking buses. Uh, in this case, we upcommand parents to walk in the morning with the children from the community to school and in the afternoon from the school gate back into the communities. Our partnerships with the FET colleges continue. Thousands of youth from violent, uh, stricken communities register through the department to the uh, institutions, and the aim is to provide the vulnerable youth with a viable alternative. Thank you. Honorable Lecker. Mr. Speaker. Deputy Speaker, in the past six months, we have seen that children have repeatedly been caught up in criminal battles. The fact that children are maimed and murdered is a cause for concern. Um, we have seen a four-year-old in Eitzach that was killed, a nine-year-old from Mitchell's Plain that was killed, a six-month-old from Ocean View that was hit by a stray bullet. And I want to get an understanding from the MEC um, if he were to be granted an opportunity um, to canvas and ensure that a children's commissioner is appointed in the Western Cape, what would be his role in ensuring that it becomes a reality and that children that are killed unabated are protected <laughs> from such deaths? I thank you. Minister. Uh, thank you for the question. The Children's Commissioner issue is in process. I'm not going to say much more about that. It, it was raised, and, uh, but I fully agree 
with the honourable member. Just one second, Minister Plaute. Honourable Lecker, is there a question? I've point got of order? a point of order, Deputy Speaker. Yes. I think we're discussing a very critical issue, which is close to my heart, and I'd like to request that you caution Member Fritz to keep his finger to himself and not point at me. Yes, I did not see that, but uh, in general, order, order. Uh, please do not point fingers at one another. That's not part of the decorum of the House. Honourable Plati, you may proceed. Um, thank you, Honourable Deputy Speaker. I fully agree with the member. The killing of children is a very serious matter. We cannot condone that. And uh, that is why my department and I, we are so many times in the communities to address these topics. I brother, no man. <laughs> um, um, in line with what the Honourable Member have said with the question, yesterday morning I visit many, many of the families, specifically where children that is, are dead, uh, is involved. Um, it, it, it is terribly serious. And that is why my message to the police is please find the illegal guns. Our biggest problem currently today is, is the availability of, of so many guns on our streets. Thank you, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Lecker. Um, thank you, Deputy Speaker. You see, Deputy Speaker, our neighbourhoods have become and tra been transformed into killing fields. Anyone can end up in the firing line. And with the MEC saying that the neighborhood watch members have been trained, there are tasks out there, 10,000 youth has been reached, about 2.3 million has been spent on, on, on the training of neighborhood watches. I'm, 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 I'm worried because it looks like all your mont, all your order, mont, order. all your mont, order, order. 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 Whoever said order. I don't want to Who said that? How you want there? Please go withdraw that. You may proceed, but you may proceed, but get to the question. You've got a long introduction, but get to the question. I understand Member Wiley is not affected by any killings that are taking place in the townships. Um, Chairperson, Speaker, I want to understand from the monies that has been spent on training the neighborhood watches, are we not creating a perception that members of the neighborhood watch must duck and dive bullets whilst we're not ensuring that the Department of Community Safety in participate in ensuring that members of the Metropolis are integrated into the SAPS so that we can have a false Order, multiplier. Th think what would be the perception or the role of the MEC in ensuring that kind of integration? Order. That is a very long order. Order. Minister Plati, you may respond to that, but that is a very long question and I want members to, uh, to uh, ask more concise questions. Deputy Speaker, I will answer the member to the best of my abilities. Um, order. Yours is coming, my friend. Uh, <laughs> um, Deputy Speaker, with regard to Metro Police and integration and neighborhood watches and so on, the entity is working very closely together. There's a very good uh, relationship between SAPS and Metro Police and law enforcement. I am many at times on raids with them, and they really complement one another. Neighborhood watches to involved with the community policing forums. And uh, just a, a, a correction with regard to the 2,3 million was not for neighborhood watch training, but that was for the youth safety and the religious program. But the member is quite correct. There's also a sizable amount uh, budgeted for the training of neighborhood watches as, as well. We are busy. The, the, the time for questions has expired, but we'll continue with this question and finish it off. Honourable Lecker. Thank, thank you, Speaker. I, I really accept that uh, MEC Dan Plato has lost the fight on community policy. Um, but I want to, to get an understanding. Seeing that is now being demoted as the mayor 
from being the embassy. May the what will be order, so Honourable Wiley? Just one second. <laughs> with, with respect, these, these questions sessions are, are a right to the members. Uh, sit down. Tell your members what order, they must order. ask and not me. Order. May, may I Allow the member to matter, speak. Please. May you I may address me. Matter. When we abuse that privilege of right of questioning the executive, I don't take instructions from you. Passing, passing personal remarks I instead don't of just take leading up to it. From you. Uh, the Tell first two sentences. Members. Order. Tell your TA members I Order, Honourable Lacker. Please contain yourself. Honourable Ace, just take your seat for a moment. Her first two sentences are to cast dispersions. That's not even a lead up to a question. Order. Order. Can I confirm that the questions. Order. When members ask supplementary questions, it must be in a concise form related to either the original question or to the response of the minister. And please refrain from. From dwelling off on side tracks. Honourable Lekker, I'll give you another last opportunity to ask a, a concise question if you want to. My question is, and it was, what would be his role in ensuring that our communities are and people feel safe as the mayor of Cape Town? Thank you, you Minister Plat, you may proceed. Honourable uh, Deputy Speaker, the question with regard to lost the fight and that sort of thing. I just want to remind the member. The National Minister of Police, when he released the crime stats, was quite clear. He said, we've lost, we have dropped the ball. He was quite clear that police and his office self lost the fight against criminals on our streets. That is a fact. That was a bold statement by him. I applaud him for making that statement. And it's not excuses. It is a fact. Because in the constitution of this country, Deputy Speaker, the constitution of the country is clear. To fight crime is the responsibility of the police to do that. They are trained to do that. Not my office and no neighbourhood watch structure. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Order. That's the end of questions. Order. We will now move on to questions to the Premier without notice. Honourable Yankee, and I'm speaking to the whole House, including yourself. We will move on to questions to the Premier without notice. The first speaker, Honourable Gaka. Thank you, Deputy. Oh. Is that a point of order? Yes, Deputy I'm Speaker. Listening. Deputy Speaker, can you ask the MEC then, Platt, to withdraw what he was just said to Member Laker about pinch your own family? I know about your family. He's casting aspersions. He's casting aspersions and the integrity of our members this side. And it's unacceptable. Order, I will have a look. Order, I did not hear that. In order, I will have a look at Hansard and I will come back to the House if necessary. Please, please proceed, Honourable Mugoka. Order. Honourable Lacker. Honourable Lacker. Honourable Buta, you want to address me? Also, on a point of order, by the same token, Member Lacker is also said to the MEC that he is friends with gangsters. That's also casting aspersion. Order. 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 Honourable. Order. The same applies to that one. I will study Hansard and, if necessary, get back to the House on that. Honourable Lacker. Honourable Lacker and Honourable Diana next to you. Please contain yourself. Deputy, Deputy Speaker, is this, is this the way that um, the Honourable MEC is, is, is going to take up his new position by sticking out his tongue. Honourable, Honourable uh, Gillian. No, 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 he's sticking out Order. his tongue. Order. Order. May I please, Honourable Plato, I did not see that, but if, that, if you do something like that or did something like that, please do not do it again. I can't ask you to withdraw it, but please don't do it. Let's proceed to the Honourable Mugaka to ask the question to the Premier. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. 
Honorable, Honorable Premier, after our Honorable Minister Matt Gisela's birthday party controversy, an internal anti-Madigizela faction leaked the pictures and everything about the party to all of us. A DA internal faction. You, Premier, is investigated this allegation according to the commitment you made. Can you tell us as when are you going to release the report, or is it because the report was just intended to prevent Matikizela being a premier? Honorable Premier, before you respond, uh, I'm not quite sure if that question relates to party matters or governance matters, but if it relates to governance issues, Premier, you're welcome to respond. Is it governance? Can I clarify that? Premier is governance because, uh, uh, speak, Deputy Speaker, anything that is investigated by the Premier is in the interest. Yes, fine. I will, I will leave that to the, the Premier to respond to the way. The jurisdiction of this government. Thank you. Thank you for the clarity. I will leave it to the Premier to respond in the way she f feels fit. Judith? Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I don't do things for ulterior motives. And when allegations are made against Cabinet colleagues of mine, it is important for me to establish whether there is any truth in them or not because I have to decide on the career incidents of cabinet ministers. And if those allegations would have been potentially true, I would have had to take them seriously. I am very glad the Honorable Magatla said that a faction in the DA leaked those pictures because it tells me now very clearly that in the context, uh, context of a run-up to our provincial leadership elections, where there were two candidates in, in a closely fought context, I had absolutely no doubt that someone who is no longer on these benches today had been mobilizing evidence, Order. had been mobilizing evidence and had been releasing those things selectively to the Honourable the Opposition. So I want to, th so I want, I want to thank the Honourable Magatla for confirming that. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Order, order. At the time this became an issue, at the time this became an issue, the succession race for the Premier was not under discussion. What was under discussion was the leadership of this province. And that was the reason that that issue was driven. And in fact, when the information came to me, I spoke to the Honorable Madikizela, and I said, I am going to have to investigate this. And he said to me, of course, please do. And I went along and I spoke to everybody who had been named or involved or after my investigation had been identified as being any sort of contact of Minister Madikizela or a supplier to the Western Cape government of anything. I interviewed them. I got all the invoices. I traced all the sources. I spoke to the hotel involved. I did everything. We know who bought the cake. And I wrote up a report, and it is published for all to see on the internet, to which I would like to refer the Honorable Magatla. It has been in the public domain for a very long time. I also, when the ANC reported it to the public protector, handed all of the invoices, all of the documents, and everything to the public protector. So everything is on the table, everything is out there, and all my colleagues know that I said to them, this is a complete storm in a teacup, and it's being used by people against the Honorable Madikizela, and fortunately, yes, you are right, it was in the DA, but very, 
very conveniently, one of the individuals who is not a white liberal who was driving this is no longer in our caucus. Thank you. Order. Order, Honourable McGurka. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Premier, for your first question. The, my second question is, uh, is a bit of follow-up, Honourable Premier. Premier, as part of the investigation, even by public protector, you are expected to also provide some information of which you have said you send a lot, number of uh, invoices and so on. But uh, is it true that, Premier, as you have given that information to the public protector, you have not named after your preliminary investigation the people involved, even the person you are referring to as not here, you are alleging that she's not here. You have not forwarded the actual names of people involved in this. Instead, you refer to those people as business people. It, it, now, is oh, it God, true oh, that... Oh, God, I'll get to the question. This okay. is a concise That's question. A, my actual question, is it true that the, the Premier didn't forward the names Thank you. of the actual culprit, including the person that she, he, she alleges to be the person who did? And he referred to those people in, those, in, the, in that particular information as business people. Thank you, Honourable Premier. Just, just one second, Premier. Order, Honourable Minister. Sorry, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Order. I, ca order. I can't hear the Minister. Um, is it in order to be discussing a matter that's currently before the Conduct Committee in this room? Yes, uh, sub judice would not apply in this case. The Premier may proceed to reply. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> I gave all the details and, as far as I recall, the name of any person associated with providing things to this government who had contributed financially to the party, and I gave that to the public protector. I, in my investigation, had found that there was absolutely no malpractice involved in doing that and certainly no favours in return. The bottom line was that it was a surprise party, that the Honourable Minister had no knowledge of whatsoever, and our procurement system is hermetically sealed from politically, political involvement. That is why I investigated to see if there had been any kind of breach of it. I found that there was no such breach, but when the public protector started investigating, I said, here, take everything, I'll come and answer questions. I'll speak to you about everything. Up till now, up till now, I have heard nothing further from the public protector who has everything. And I went into it in depth, including speaking to the hotel to get their figures and to double check all the invoice payments and who they came from and for what purpose. And I am satisfied, I am satisfied that there was absolutely no ethical breach here. Order, Honourable Magaka, your last opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Premier. Honourable Madam Premier. But, uh, Madam Premier, you did not give the report to this provincial legislature, but chosen to give it to the leader of the DA, Musi Maimani, in order to prevent and manage this Matigizela's ambition, Honorable Matigizela's ambition. But I just want to ask my last question. Premier, do you really think our Honorable Matigizela can be such naive enough not to realize that this we Honorable Windy project was decided before the one and only one, the, the only hotel birthday party. Order. 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 
May I just point out to the Leader of the Opposition that he asked the Premier for an opinion, and that also is not allowed in terms of the rules. So, Premier, if you want to respond to that, you may so do so. But well, I would actually respond if I knew what the question was, but I couldn't work it out. I absolutely couldn't work it out. If the member would want to rephrase the question very yes. quickly. Uh, thank you. Please, the Premier wants to hear the question, sir. Honourable, Honourable Premier, I'm saying here, we as this legislature, we have not yet received and the, 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 the whole preliminary report of which we think we deserve to have it. But you have given the, the report to, uh, to Mr. Musi Maimani, oh, and we think that, I think personally that that is, an, that is a, a testimony to prevent and manage Madikizela's ambition. But my question is whether, Premier, do you know, I mean, do you really think Honorable Matigizela can be naive enough not to realize that the Honorable Wind project, this project of being a premier, was actually des decided long before the one and only order, order. Saka. Order, Premier. What I am not. Order, please allow the Premier the opportunity to respond. Deputy Speaker, what I am not is naive enough to believe the conspiracy theories of the Honorable the Leader of the Opposition. I have not given that report to anyone. I have published it, and it is there for everybody to see in graphic detail. And anybody who wants to read it is welcome to read it, and I stand by it. Months and months have gone by. If the public protector had any sense at all that I had been trying to mislead or manipulate or leave out critical information, she surely would have come back by now and asked further questions. The fact is, Deputy Speaker, that this matter had nothing to do with the Premier succession issue. It had everything to do, it had everything to do. Order. It had everything to do with a succession battle for the leadership of the Democratic Alliance in the Western Cape. And one of the invitees to that party, as you say, took photographs, gave them to the ANC, consulted in great detail with many members of the ANC, and we knew exactly who they are. And the former honorable leader of the ANC, Marius Fransman, is no more, and his co-conspirator in the Democratic Alliance is working for Minister Kelly. And it is quite extraordinary that a non-issue like this has continued and continued and continued because it shows the honorable the opposition has nothing else. And we know that they are trying to drive wedges in our own caucus, but it will not work. It will not work. Order. The Honorable Madiki Zela is courageous and committed to non-racialism. Honorable Yankee, please. <clears throat> you can't comment on every statement by the Premier. And he left the ANC because like former President Thabo Mbeki, he saw that the ANC had abandoned its commitment to non-racialism. And you are trying to drive wedges into this party. We have proper, we have proper candidate selection processes, unlike the ANC, and they can stop their conspiracy theories and wedge driving right now. We move on to the next question, Honorable Maseku. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Premier, the preamble of the South African Constitution includes the words, and I quote, South Africa belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity, close quote. 
But every Heritage Day, some people will feel compelled to criticize how other people celebrate their heritage. Does government have a role to play in building a common heritage, or is our diversity our real strength? Premier. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Honourable Deputy Speaker. That's a very important question. Order. Order. First of all, I'd like to divert slightly and answer the interjection of the Honourable Magakla, who claimed that the Constitution is an ANC document. It most emphatically is not. It most emphatically is not. It is a document that summarizes the South African Compact. It was abandoned by the ANC. Order. It was abandoned by the ANC. It was abandoned by the ANC. Go and read the 30-page document of former President Thabo Mbeki. You will see that that phrase has been abandoned by the ANC, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Now, on Heritage Day, I attended two different events. One on the eve of Heritage Day, the other on Heritage Day. And one of them was in Hanardendal. And it was a very powerful church service that celebrated a huge amount of South Africa's heritage. The first tertiary institution in South Africa was in Hanardendal. The first novel published in Afrikaans, for example, was published in the press, the printing press of Hanardendal. The first Kaka Bienva was constructed in Hanardendal. And when I was there, I learned all about these extraordinary things. So that little former mission station is rich, very rich, in South African heritage. And afterwards, when we were eating poikikos, which is also part of South Africa's heritage, people came to me and said, previously, their children had been able to go to nursing colleges, to teaching colleges, to become apprentices, to do training, all in Afrikaans. And today, their kids can go nowhere, they say, because no tertiary institution anymore caters for Afrikaans. And they say that they used to believe South Africa belongs to all who live in it, but they have now been excluded. And their children, who used to be able to train as teachers and nurses and apprentices and various other things, now are excluded because of their language because a majority in this country insists that despite, that despite the fact that we have all of our official languages, there will only be one official language of tertiary education. And that is divide and rule. That is divide and rule, Honorable Deputy Speaker. And it felt to me really heartbreaking that a wonderful community that I can only describe as having quite strong Calvinist work ethic and lovely planted gardens and a whole range of other things happening there, find now that they can't feed their children into tertiary institutions because their children don't speak English. And I am very determined that we will find a way of doing something about it because an entire heritage is dying out because of the intolerance of a majority in the society. And most respectable democracies look after minorities, Mr. Deputy Speaker. In this country, minorities are demonized. They are even scapegoated. And it is totally outrageous that this is often done on the basis of color or of language, especially on Heritage Day when what we're supposed to be doing is celebrating those different cultures. 
There have been some outrageous articles and statements around Heritage Day which do exactly what I've described, scapegoating minorities for South Africa's problems. And a critical thing for the government to do is say that the Constitution represents our national and collective heritage. And just as much as we say that we should celebrate our diversity, it is also critical to celebrate what we have in common. Because there are far too many people in this country who want to use diversity to divide people and to suppress minority cultures. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. The time for questions to the Premier has expired, but I will allow the member to ask one question if she wants to proceed. Thank you very much. Premier, in celebrating Heritage Day, the personally um, embodying its broad meaning, what will be your ideal um, Heritage Day celebration if, as a Premier, you'll have to say to Western Cape for celebrating Heritage Day, this is what that has to entail? to anybody because you know people can celebrate the individual heritage and they can celebrate their collective heritage as long as people are true to themselves yes I come from a German heritage but it's not the important thing to me the important thing to me is our collective South African heritage and how we've tried to build on it and work on it and so what I do want to argue is that I think that preparing food and eating it together is a great way of celebrating our collective heritage. That's why a poiki course was a lovely thing to do, to celebrate that collective heritage with vegetables that people had planted in their own gardens and harvested and that everybody put in their pot. Fantastic. Building our collective heritage around a poiki. And I don't think that anyone would argue that a poiki can symbolize any kind of oppressive culture, probably a bit of cultural, probably about cultural appropriation because the truth is that another fundamental distortion. South Africa belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity, and we celebrate and respect the contributions of every culture. But there you have, there you have the exact distortion that I've been referring to. Some people did not make a contribution according to the ANC. Some people have a contribution that can be spat on, and I have never, ever done that. And that is a complete distortion. And it's not only a distortion, it's a fundamental untruth, Mr. Deputy Speaker. A fundamental and, frankly, considered untruth. You know what? I am famous for having my words distorted and manipulated for the purpose of manufacturing outrage. That is what I'm famous for. Order, order. I don't support colonialism. I never have and I never will. And I've done far more to fight it than most other people. I said the legacy is not only negative, which is what our textbooks say, which is what Mandela said, which is what 99% of respecting historians and authorities on the subject say. History 101. So, the, Order. the bottom line, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is that people can celebrate Heritage Day in whatever way they like. But I think it makes all kinds of sense to prepare food and eat it together so that we can celebrate our common culture. Thank you, <coughs> Premier. That brings us to the end of questions to the Premier. We move on to statements. I see the DA first. Honourable. Thank you, uh, Deputy uh, Speaker. Yesterday Wally. was a sad day for the South African Police Service in the Western Cape. Not because the hardworking men in blue did anything wrong. On the contrary, they acquired them, acquitted themselves well in the task given to them. But it was a day of betrayal by the ANC national government where the naked truth that the ANC sees the police an extension of itself became apparent. It was a day when demonstrated the, to the public they simply do not care for the residents of the Western Cape but continue to use them as cannon fodder in their daily battle against crime. The following happened. In its reports, the SAPS uh, Railway Police has no MOU with either Metro Rail or Praza after seven years. 
In other words, no political commitment to capacitate the departments to combat crime. In the annual provincial crime report, the reasons given for non-performance were essentially a socio-political commentary in a not so well veiled attempt to blame the city and the province for unacceptable affairs. Not a word about the dire police under-resourcing of the province that is placing dedicated officers in human levels of stress and workload and danger. But the clincher came in none other than the national minister himself. He first instructs the provincial commissioner to accompany him to a community meeting instead of being in the provincial legislature to present the crime report. That is clear evidence that policing is a national function. Then he stands idly by when some ANC activists demand that the MAKO member tasked with the Metro Police and the Ward Council get evicted uh, from the meeting. Instead of standing up for the constitutionally elected le public office bearers, he becomes part of the howling mob. Shades of Zuma indeed. When I was Minister of Community Safety some 20 years ago, President Mandela always unfailingly welcomed me in my capacity and invited me to participate in his common objective, and that was to create a united and peaceful South Africa. He led by example. Thank you. I see the ANC. Deputy Speaker. Oh, sorry, Speaker, can I call so, a point of sorry, order, please? Uh, Honourable Magaga, can kindly take your seat, please. Speaker, take I just wanted you to, to, to bring this to your attention. You might just give guidance on this matter. I just switched on my Wi-Fi to my laptop, and I found Member Schaefer, which is here, and then Member Marius Fransman. Where is he? Because his Bluetooth is here. Sorry. Um, uh, that, is, that is not a point of order, Honourable Mackenzie, but I will... Thank you. Honourable Magaka. Thank you, Speaker. Our country has a representative and diplomat of note in our current president, Cyril Ramaphosa, who is growing exponentially as the face of brand South Africa. This week, the president represented this country at the United Nations General Assembly in New York where he stood out head and shoulders. Investor confidence, economic trust, and hope increases daily to let South Africa take its rightful place in the world economy. One of the latest steps was a policy reform and a growth plan to stimulate business and bring relief over a shorter Order, period please. of ordinary residents. The reprioritization of 45 billion rand public spending will boost the ailing economy without additional expenses or borrowing. Order, Activities please. that will benefit are those that have the greatest impact on economic growth, domestic demand, and job creation with emphasis on township and rural economies, as well as women and youth. Those who can't appreciate that is only those who belong to the current American president. The president Order. also said there are other elements that are investigated to make South Africa more competitive. This includes a review of various administered commodities such as electricity, ports, and rail tariffs to reduce the cost of doing business. The review started around visas, and the regulations on the travel of minors. I thank you. Thank you. I see the DA. Order, please. <laughs> Madam Speaker, our heritage promotes Ubuntu. Ubuntu is instilled by mothers, young and old, who are the custodians of our culture and language. Traditionally, children were raised by their mothers, grandmothers, aunties, family friends, and many others. Today, we live in a more excluded and isolated society. How can that heritage be passed down if our teen mothers are not educated in their own culture and language? Having said that, in the West Coast, a sense of community prevails. In a recent parliamentary question, it was revealed that between 2014 and 2017, 76.9% of learners from the West Coast who fell pregnant continued to write matric. This would not be possible without the dedicated OMAS, family, friends, and communities who support our young moms. Speaker, while it is important to uplift teen mothers through education, I must express my concern 
on the recent spate in abductions, rapes, and murders of our girl children, which indicates that we are not looking out for the safety of our own. Sadly, an unchanged part of our heritage is that women, more often than not, are the primary caretakers of their children. Too often are our children raised by their single mothers and grandmothers. Their fathers are absent and not involved. This perpetuates a vicious cycle. If our young girls become young mothers, receive no support from their partners, and do not attain any education, what will empower their children to make different decisions? What will become of our heritage? Speaker, I call on all leaders in communities, parents, teachers, and religious leaders to promote and educate both our boy and girl child, girl children on the importance of practicing safe sex. Without this, we cannot educate our youth and we cannot protect our heritage. I thank you. Thank you. In the absence of the EFF, I see the DA. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. In the midst of our country falling into economic recession, the rise in general unemployment, the lack of sufficient police resources to ensure that visible policing deters criminals and the, and the neglect by national government's failure to implement policy are just a few of the many causes that have led to an, an increase in the cases of human trafficking being reported in South Africa. Madam Speaker, increasingly we are hearing stories of, of our beloved children either being nabbed or attempted to being nabbed on their way to and from school. Human trafficking is not only confined to our shores, it is a global phenomenon, but that is having a devastating effect across the entire globe too. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, human trafficking is real, hidden in plain sight, and tearing at the social fabric of our nation as the demand for cheap labor and sexual services keeps growing. As this demand keeps growing, so does the need to increase our efforts to prevent and deter criminals from committing such crime. Madam Speaker, the recruiters of human trafficking often come from the same dire social and economic background as their victims. Therefore, in order for us to effectively tackle human trafficking speaker, there should be intensified training of police officials and other role players in identification and policing of, of trafficking. Furthermore, these efforts ought to be supported by awareness campaigns targeted at enabling community members to identify domestic servitude, street begging, selling of drugs, sexual exploitation, and working in all sectors that might involve trafficking. I thank you. Thank you. I see the ANC. Thank you, Speaker. The anointed DA Premier candidate, the Honorable Alan Windy, is in fact the fly in the ointment. Big question marks hang over him after various public allegations of corruption and public money abuse for tourism purposes. Interestingly, in Naisna, his place of birth and home. Windy, as a tourism MEC, is a former agent and operator with some knock-on interest in tourism. And Windy is indicated by some pushing for investigations into illegal, illegal funding of debt at certain tourism bodies, bribery and cover-up of sorts. Only time will tell what the facts are. The people of the Western Cape are fe fed DA spin, smoke and mirrors of what a wonderful MEC Windy is, while the vulnerable people and farm workers are evicted and abused. He does not meet the protesters of the Duerans. He does not work for agriculture as a whole, food security and labor harmony. His annual reports for 2016-2017 and 2017-2018 are not submitted. What a bad leader. The Honorable Snap, DA Provincial Leader, MEC Madikizela must know his political grave is dug by the same liberals who sold him out, leaked information, and even the photos of his ill considered post hotel birthday bash to make way for Windy as the premier candidate. 
Because I see the DA. Thank you, Speaker. As we approach order, Heritage please. Month, I am reminded of the words of former President Nelson Mandela, where stated, when our first democratically elected government decided to make Heritage Day one of our national days, we did so because we knew that our rich and varied cultural heritage has a profound power to build a new nation. Close quote. Speaker, Section 30 of the Bill of Rights states the following. Everyone has the right to use the language and to participate in the cultural life of their choice. Close quote. I would further argue that cultural life means things that enrich your normal life, like dancing, music, food, art traditions, festivals, and other things that bring people together, including braying at your home. It is up to us as South Africa to ensure that our joint heritage is preserved, which speaker makes the draft National Museum policy so important. I brought an interpolation to this House weeks ago where we debated about this policy, and sadly nothing is done by the National Department of, Culture, of Arts and Culture. I call on members of the ANC to urgently write to their national colleagues to ensure that the National Museum policy is finalized to avoid us having another roads must foil or give followers opportunities to attack buildings they deem offensive as we approach elections 2019. The vacuum of this policy is allowing this to happen, and I can only assume it's being done deliberately by the National ANC government as we head into elections 2019. Deputy Speaker, it is incumbent upon all of us, citizens, leaders, parents, friends, and family, to build one South Africa for all. A South Africa where we all are treated equally and enjoy the same rights, where we are not defined by whether we are black, white, colored Indian, where opportunities are not attached to persons' ethnicity, gender, or sexuality. Or sexuality. Speaker, it is far easier to divide people racially. However, we on this side of the House are more willing to take up this challenge to build one South Africa for all. We understand that South Africa lies in its diversity, that our heritage defines our shared values and our insoluble desire for, a pro for prosperity is mirrored by our passion to build one South Africa for all. I thank you. Thank you. Honourable Dianke, you've just arrived. As a belief. Uh, I see the Honourable, the ACDP. Speaker, the total shutdown that happened on Tuesday is a, uh, is a desperate outcry by the Western Cape communities for the DA government to intervene in the troubles they live in. Speaker, I want to go further to say we only do not need change. We need a political change in 2019. And that will change the, the quality of life of our people. Speaker, two weeks ago, I went to see, I went to go watch the movie called Alan Puckies. And this is a, a true life story of a 11 year old lady that killed her own son. And you know, the magistrate came and she said, I am not sending this lady to prison because the system has failed her. This story, Madam Speaker, this story is prevalent in all our communities on a daily basis. And the DA government must take responsibility. They need to take responsibility because they have failed our communities. We need change and we need political change 2019. Communities, communities are not safe. They're not safe in their homes. Schools are not safe. Youngsters are roaming the streets purposefully, uh, 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 with no purpose in life, because they cannot find jobs. Speaker, the Western Cape government must intervene, must intervene in our schools, must intervene in the communities. We do not need superficial chains. Superficial chains is demoting Dan Plato to mayor. That is for superficial chains. Superficial chains, we need real chains. Superficial change is making Minister Al and we need the DA candidate. They know it's not going to work. They know it's not going to work. That is superficial change. We need real change. The DA, the DA government for 10 years, the DA Order. government for 10 years has failed the people of the Western Cape. And 2019, we will see a new government. I thank you. Thank you. I see the ANC. May order, please, members. Order. Even DA friends say if the honourable member Dan Plato is the candidate to take over from overthrown Cape Town Mayor Patricia Delil, then the DA is scrapping the bottom of the barrel. 
Um, Plato is an extremely weak choice as he could not make the great, the first ten he had as placeholder oh, after Honourable the Honourable Helen kindly, Zille. Honourable Lekker, kindly take your seat, please. Minister Madikizela. The member is casting aspersion on, an, on another honourable member. And I, I don't think that's parliamentary. Um, Chief? Uh, Jesse, on another matter in this regard. When you're going to do a personal attack on a member, it is a convention of the House to have the courtesy to invite that member to be in the House so that at least are able to front, confront the accusers. Thank you. Order, please, members. Sorry, Honourable uh, Lekker, kindly take your seat. We are sailing close to the wind here because we are using statements to cast aspersions. And as the Speaker, I do have the right, in consultation with the member, to expunge anything from the record if it is not presented as a substantive motion. So I'm going to appeal to both sides of the House, please do not use your two-minute statements. Sorry, I, I'm not. Honourable Magaka. Honourable Magaka. Sorry, I. Please, Honourable Magaka, take your take your seat, please. Take take your seat, please. I am speaking. Honourable Magaka. I am so sorry. Honourable no, Magaka. No board came here and talk and, 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 and order, order, please. Take your seat. Minister Fritz. Sorry. Can I please keep Honourable Speaker? You must address the situation. No, no. Hold this on. Is gangsterism. I am not. No. Members, house, kindly take house, yeah. your seat, no, please. Like kindly, all of you take your seats, please. We are all equal members. Hon Honourable Chacham, take your seat. I was busy speaking when Honourable Magat. Take your seat. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. I, I was explaining that statements are being used. Yes. I did not refer to Minister Plato because there were two statements made. Member Davids made a statement, and then Member Lekas also made a statement. So I am talking to two statements. But your outburst and your blatant disrespect of the chair leaves me with no option but to ask you to leave the chamber for the rest of the day. And thank you. You need to leave. I will not have you disrespect the authority of the chair in the way that you did. Kindly leave, please. Honourable Magaka, please leave. Thank you. You please leave. I've asked you to leave. Sorry. Thank you. Speaker, take your seats, please, members. We can't have. No, no. I'm sorry. Why are you treating the ANC like this, Minister? Um, Take your seats, please. Honourable Ace, I was in the middle of explaining something when the Honourable Magaka all launched into me. That is completely unacceptable. He, he, could have, all of us. he could have allowed me to finish what I was saying and then stood up. Instead, he threatened virtually pointing at me and having a go at me. It's a blatant disregard and disrespect of the chair. So I've asked him to leave. I'm sorry. Thank you. I was not... Mem members, Member Davids, I, if you look at a replay of what happens in any sitting, you always accuse me of, of having a go at the ANC. But, no, but maybe you should go and reflect on your behavior after a sitting and see how you manage yourselves. You hardly manage yourselves with dignity and decorum, which is why any presiding officer will have to call you to order. And that's exactly what I've done now. I've tried to point out that you cannot use statements. This is not your house. Every time under you. This is not your house. Under you. 
decorum collapses yes. in this house. Well, I'm Every time so under sorry. you. This is not the first time, Speaker. It that is my duty to maintain because order. You are biased. Well, you are biased. Well, if you, you feel I'm biased, Honourable Chacham, you can bring a substantive motion against me. Until then, I will stay in this chair and I will manage this house. It's making no difference. I'm sorry. We have done in the past. Take your seat, please. I am not in entertaining that. I'm sorry. It is my duty to maintain dignity and decorum of this house. No, where? Sorry. We simply cannot. Okay. Well, if you. Dignity belongs to every single member. Every single member of this house must be, must to be managed with dignity. No, I'm sorry, I'm not. You need to reflect, you need, as, as, the, as the official opposition, you need to reflect on your behavior and how you manage yourself. I'm sorry, that is the bottom line. Member Ace? I'm sorry, Speaker, but you let this fall into disarray. You're shouting at members here. No, Honorable Magaka shouted at you're me. You're setting a bad example, no, Honorable I'm sorry. Speaker. Why are you doing it? Do you want us not to be here when the mayor and Perro is being uh, presented? No, that's you not chase the, the leader of the opposition out. You don't treat political parties equal. You don't do it. Member it was lies spread here. But you don't care about that, Member Speaker. Ace, Nothing. As, as the chief whip, you know what it is to manage your, your caucus. And there are times when they are completely but, unruly. But, and no, no, hold on, hold on. Do you see screaming and shouting? Do you see screaming and shouting? So the point I'm trying to make, I understand your role. I, I was speaking when Honorable Magaka just launched into me. I'm so sorry. I am not, I am not defending members. Take your seat, please, Chief Whip. Honourable Speaker, yes. the DA was shouting all the time here, but you did nothing, nothing at all to them. We've been saying this right through the whole of the sitting, but you're not treating the ANC and the DA equal. Honourable Ace, not doing it, I try my best to manage this you're house. Not. I do. What, what triggered this action now was the fact that I was speaking and the Honourable Magaka just started shouting at me and pointing his finger at me. Now, that is completely unacceptable. We cannot allow that. I mean, throughout the day, I've asked people, manage yourself to not point fingers, talk to the chair. I mean, every week we go through the same process. But, Speaker, don't you understand the frustration of the ANC when you don't treat us equally? I, I try, don't you understand? I, Honorable Ace, I try my best to be impartial and fair. And I'm sorry, I am going to stay in the seat and we are going to continue with proceedings. Chief Whoop. Sorry, the Chief Whip's on his feet. Kindly take your seat, please. Deputy Speaker, I mean, Speaker, this is obviously an orchestrated effort. I would, I would, I would like... And the ANC have turned the House into grave disorder, which is Rule 49. I would like to, I would like to ask that the whole recording of this sitting be reviewed by a panel of members with a view to determining with a view to determining exactly how the situation has evolved. Honourable Chief Whip, thank, thank you. That is not a point of all... Sorry, no. Uh, you I can... I to address you to those yes, speakers. Sorry, thank you. you have. Thank you. And Honourable um, Ace, the Honourable Wiley has indicated he can't do a motion, as you said, but he can, after the proceedings, determine a route that needs to be followed. There is, though, a trend that has emerged over a period of time. And I don't know whether any of you do, but I watch every sitting after, and I play it on my computer, and I use it. I use it to educate myself to make sure that I am fair and that I am impartial. But we have the usual suspects. Again, here we go. You have no respect even while someone is speaking, oh, you chirp, and that is that's exactly point the of point. Order, chair, point of order, Speaker. Speaker. Uh, Minister Madikizela. Minister Madikizela. Speaker, your, 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 
Your language is not good for a speaker. And I want to plead with you. When Member Makaka was, was attacked through motions and statements and all of that, he was not in the house. You didn't call the DA to order like you did now. The whole time when all those MECs were making a noise, you don't call them to order. Member Gillian, you, you are biased, Speaker. Sorry. Member Gillian, that is your opinion, which you are entitled to. I, I remember calling Minister Windy to order, Minister Madikizela to order, so please do not say that I have not called them to order. Earlier in the proceedings, I actually called the ministers to order. So to say that I didn't call them to order is an unfair statement. Yes, Minister. You. Speaker, you would recall that um, it was the Chief Whip, Mark Wiley, who was indicating a procedure to be followed when there was a personal attack on members, that there should be notice given. You were in the chair when members from that side of the House held up a couple of weeks ago um, statements um, basic to the effect that Basic. No, she was there in the beginning part when people held up, when people, when people held up um, posters indicating that Kaya Magata, the honourable leader of the opposition. So when the, speak, when the speaker, either the speaker or the deputy speaker, treats our members in such a biased fashion and allows other members clearly to do things which are against the rules, the perception of bias moves beyond simply a perception that is bias. And I think the fact that you've made a ruling where you've singled out Honourable Member Magata, whereas the Speaker or the Deputy Speaker could have acted against members who, for instance, defamed our member by holding up posters. I want to urge you to urgently reconsider to call um, Honourable Mem Member Magata back so that we can continue in, with this session, because otherwise the way that you've singled him out is an indication of bias in comparison to how you've dealt with previous matters. Honourable Dagmar, your point will not be sustained. I stand firm that the manner in which Honourable Magaka shouted at me and pointed his finger is disrespectful, and I will not allow that precedent to be set, unfortunately. I try to be fair, as I say, in everything I do, and I have appealed to both sides of the House. And you touch on the situation of placards earlier on in the year or last year. It's situational because we have rulings, and the ruling said as long as the placard does not disrupt the proceedings of the House or impact the dignity and decorum. And after two requests from this side of the bench, I indicated to the DA, please do not display your placards. So to make it seem as if it was allowed without any interference on my part or any caution on my part is, is being untruthful, to say the least. Member Beerwinkel. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to, and I, I'm giving you the right to call me to order if I'm wrong. You left the chair just before the placard brigade started. Deputy Chair was in the seat. When the, when the, when the issues were raised about Comrade, our leader of the opposition, now, you also said, Speaker, that you watch the proceedings every time. So having watched that, you should have seen how this whole house erupted into chaos to an extent that we left. Bearing that in mind, when you mentioned that one of our members this side was casting aspersions, in the back of your mind, you should have seen that picture and how that was dealt with to use that same principle how this is being dealt with. None of us here have placards. None of us are disrupting the house. None of us are causing a raucous behavior that the whole of the DA needs to walk out. I think our leader of the opposition, in absolute disgust and frustration, felt, why is it OK for them, each one, to make a different motion about him and nothing was done, yet now one person makes a statement and this whole um, disruption is happening now, and you're calling to order to the extent that is out. So it's the principle of the issue, uh, uh, Speaker, that we're addressing. Thank, thank you, Member Beerwinkel. You talked to a principle, and the, you, by your own admission, said that those were motions. My comment was based on the fact that there are 10 member statements of two minutes each, 
And the trend is now developing that statements are being used as substantive motions as if it were. So I'm very mindful of the fact that those were motions, and at the time you left, I was not in the chair. But I do undertake that I will, I strive to act with fairness in everything I do. But unfortunately, if you watch a rerun and you see how events start, every event is situational, and I try to read the mood of the House, and I try and give members the benefit of the doubt. But we cannot have what happened here now be a precedent for further sittings. It just cannot be. So I'm appealing not only to the ANC bench, I'm appealing to all parties in the House that when you come into the chamber, bring a little bit of tolerance and respect, because what is happening now, I can understand that it's an election period and people want to make their point. But we cannot, no, no, what I'm saying, use, use the instruments available to you for its intended purpose. That's why we have interpolations, debates, statements, questions, motions. We, we, are, we are sailing close to the wind, and I needed to just make that caution. Thank you. Honorable Chacham, if you know the rules, order sorry, you would understand that whilst the Speaker is speaking, you yes. should take your seat. You have stood through all the time that I've been speaking. That's a very basic tenant of managing yourself in a chamber. I when would. someone speaks, to take your seat, please. Next time, you always stand that one. Yeah. I learned but, from him. But Honorable Wali is sitting I now. I learned from him. He yes. was standing. Honourable Chacham, that, that one wrong, two but wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. Can, can, can I ask an order on your speaker? Speaker, the whole issue, Frank has that, that started that day, it did not start with the motions. It started with the statements. Here, made by two members. Here. And there was nothing. Said, and, and, and at that time, already placards were up. Okay, but now and we from there, it went to the statements. Okay. To motion. To motion. No, from statements to, to motions. motions. But Honorable yeah. Chacha. So the, the point, Speaker, particularly if you are saying we are watching this after. I do. You should know that where this process started okay. and how humiliating okay. they tried to do to our leader of, of, of the opposition. Okay. So the point. Speaker, let's be human. Okay. Let's be human because things said about you, they would affect you. They, I'm sure they, they, they do. would affect you. So therefore, it, it, it's important. And, and sometimes the frustrations can make you to shout and do all the things. Okay. As we have seen sometimes that side. Okay. Order. The point, Speaker, that I'm raising, we can't just chuck out the member. Particularly, this issue affects him in particular. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to change my ruling. The member has left the, the House, and I will endeavour in every way to be fair. But every sitting is a new sitting, Honourable Chacham. We don't bring two weeks ago in, but we have the rulings to guide us. All right. Yes, I do. I have, it, I have it right here with me. Chief, take your seat, please. Take your seat. Let him let, just finish. Honorable Chacha, sorry, I hear what you're saying, and I understand the rules, but I'm saying when we come in at quarter past two, we start a fresh sitting. Our rules over time guide us. Okay? Thank you. Um, Honorable Ace, kindly take your seat. Please take your seat. The chief whip was on his feet before you. No, no, sorry. I saw the chief whip and then I see you. So take your seat, please, Honorable Chacha. When we chief started here, yeah. when, we, when we started with the fifth, fifth parliament, we had cases of the okay. fourth parliament that we were forced right. to discuss here. Okay. Honorable so Chacha. So the issue that the is, it, it's the last, it's the previous. We now win a new. We are starting a new. It, it, it does not hold any water okay. because the rules are very clear. 
Chief, on how would we proceed. Would you care to take your seat, please? Honourable Churchill, you have the option of bringing a substantive motion. For you to stand there and accuse me of being biased is, as I said, an opinion. So I am not, no, no, no. I'm not making a case. All I am saying to you, I have tried to be fair. I have tried to sustain your point, and I've made an explanation. I am not going to be entertaining this. I've made a ruling. Honorable Magaka has left, and we will now move on with the rest of the day's proceedings. And I will try and be fair, and I will give the Honorable Ace an opportunity to address me at this stage. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, let's take it back where everything started while Honourable Lecker was speaking. Now, please help this House. What did she say that was wrong? Please help me. Uh, Honourable Ace, I'm not. I've just made no, a ruling. But you made a ruling. I am not. Yet. I'm not going I'm to not go. I'm not talking about the Honourable Sorry. Leader of the Opposition. She was on the floor. No, 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 no. Chief, no. Take your seat, please. Take no, your seat, please. No, no. Okay. No, Honourable Speaker, there was a statement by the ANC, that was the third statement. Now, what did the Honourable Lacker say that was wrong? Just help us. Honourable Ace, I'm not talking specifically to Honourable Lecker's statement. I said there is a tendency that statements are being no. used. I, I also said to you, I have made a ruling and I'm not going to go no. back. I'll give you the undertaking that I will go and review Hansard and I will no, invite you to come and have a conversation with me once I've reviewed the no, record. But, but I'm not entertaining this discussion. I'm not the, talking the about the leader of the opposition made. now. That was the second part of it. No. I'm talking about, you said, there must be a substantial motion. Correct. Now, please help me. Why did you say that? Because that triggered everything. Why did you say that? Just help me. That's well, all. Shall we ask the Honourable Lecker to repeat no, what you said? No, you made okay. the ruling, Speaker. Sorry. You made the ruling. I've made now, the ruling. Speaker, you don't know even why you made the own ruling. But because you were just me copying me the DA. Member S, please. Chief of Wiley. Speaker, I, I hope this is the second time you recognised me, but this is the first time I'm allowed to speak. Okay. I, I hope that Honourable Olive County, take your seat, please. I would like to know under what rule has this whole uh, tribe from the other side of the house? Speaker, happened? Speaker. There's, there's nothing in the rules that has allowed. That has allowed the ANC Order, please. to stand there and try and do a court of public opinion. There's nothing in the rules for this. Sorry, so I would, I would ask that we get back to the agenda and to the business of the House, please. We are. Speaker, please. The business of. Uh, Honourable Speaker, the business of the House is the statements be busy with. Correct. Now you ruled Honourable Lecker out of order. Now please help this meeting this house just help us why did you rule honorable lecker out of no. order please help us member ace we want to continue but you we don't will allow continue us. and i have said that there is a tendency for statements to be used to cast aspersions but, but, what, what, what is so, she saying to on. do that when member david's made a statement it was at minister windy okay what? when member lecker got up it was talking to minister plato what did she say but, no uh, I, I can't repeat it word for you right now, but what I'm saying is we are getting stuck in casting aspersions on people when we should be using statements for its intended purpose. I have ruled we are going to continue with statements. Member Lecker, who was on the floor, will continue. Minister Madikizela. But, Honourable, Honourable Speaker, you ruled against Honourable Lecker. And that triggered everything. Okay. Help us why and what did you rule on? Then we understand. <laughs> then we can take the uh, process forward. Honourable Ace, you know that Help once us. a ruling has you been can't, made... Can't as, come back to... You do know that David's. once a ruling has been made, you don't have to elaborate and do the, the whole thing. But, I, am not, but, I am not going to do that, Member Ace. We are going to move on with speaker, this Speaker, don't you know why you made the ruling? I know exactly why, thank you. But help Chief me, tell base. me then why. Speaker, may I refer you to Rule 49? In the, 
In the event of grave disorder at a meeting, the presiding officer may adjourn the meeting or may suspend proceedings for a period of time to be stated by him or her. May I suggest that this House suspend for a moment, please? And, and I, would, I, would, I, would urge, I would urge that you call it the whips to count. Thank you. Members, honourable members, I am willing to proceed with the sitting, provided that we move forward. I will, I will revert to Hansard. I will act with integrity. I will try, strive to be impartial, but it can only be done if there's cooperation from both sides of the House. Thank you, Member Gillian. Speaker, I want to repeat the question of our Chief Whip. What was the ruling and why did you make a ruling on Member Lecker's statement? Because it started there. Okay. That is where it started. And Speaker, you must answer us. We don't need an answer for that. You've got the table that can assist you. But the table why can... did you make a ruling? Honourable Gillian. No, 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 it's not this person's casting. When I yell at it, you are casting as persons. The Premier was doing it to Cameron also. Nobody called the Premier to order. Honourable Gillian, I have made a ruling. We are going to move forward. We are not going to continue in this way. Alternatively, I am going to have to adjourn the House, if that is what you so wish. I've, I've asked for your cooperation. Do we continue with statements? Um, so I have told you exactly why. I'm not going to entertain this, Honourable Oliver. If it's Speaker. anything relative Speaker. to this, I'm not going it's, to entertain your no, point of order. Speaker, it's, it's relative to the last part what you've now said. You want to continue. I would like to continue. We also want to continue on the basis that you answer the question was Member Lecker must continue, but she was ruled on and she must be clear what to do with the statement. Now, because she was okay. reading a statement and what she said is in, it's contained in the content, the content of a statement. Now, when you ruled that part that you've ruled, she must then be clear how she continue forward. Unless you respond to that, what have you ruled on and what is the reason for that ruling so that she can continue? Okay, so Honourable Olafir, in case you never heard me or anyone else at the beginning, I said that statements are being used to cast aspersions. Those were the words that I used. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to adjourn. But Order, speak please. Honourable, Honourable Speaker, you can't rule against Honourable Lacker because it's a general statement from yourself that statements are not used properly. All we ask is for us to continue. What was the wrongdoing on the side that you ruled against um, uh, 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 Honourable Lacker? What, 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 what it was did she casting do wrong? aspersions. What did she say, Honourable well, Speaker? Let Member Lacker proceed. Didn't. But she didn't tell us what. I believe it was casting aspersions. But, Speaker, I'm really nicely asking you, what did she say that was wrong? I, I cannot give you the word for word at this point, Honourable Ace. So I will go back to Hansard and I will revert. I have indicated I will go to Hansard and I will revert. Thank you. Honourable McAleney. Thank you. Yes. Two weeks ago, Speaker, I rise in this chamber. Oh, here we go again. Order, please. Order, please. When Speaker... Sorry, sorry. Okay. Members, it's quite evident that this is not... I think you do need some time out. No, I, um, I am now going to adjourn the House, and I'm going to ask that the Chief Whips and Member Christians come and meet with me so that we can make progress going forward, because we're not going anywhere in this way. Sorry. I have not been here to while I'm given the platform. <laughs> Chair, while I'm talking. <laughs> yeah? So I was...
Madam Speaker. Honourable Members, kindly take your seats, please. Sorry. Member Joseph, are you coming? Thank you. I have attempted to resolve this impasse. I called the Chief Whips and all parties. The Chief Whip of the ANC um, made it his business to say he did not participate in the discussion that we've had. However, they have left the House, as is evident, and we now have the option to proceed. The Minister can read his Pero Omero, alternatively he could table it. But I am not going to renege on blatant disrespect as happened here with Honourable Magaka. And similarly, to call the Speaker in question, I don't owe any explanation to anyone for a ruling. So I stand by my ruling, and I wish to thank you for being patient, but we will now proceed. We were at statements, and I think the last statement at that time was the Honourable Lecker, who has since left. So the final statement is for a member of the DA, and we will proceed without fear and favour and get on with the business of the day. I see the DA. Uh, th thank you, Honourable Speaker. Madam Speaker, the Democratic Alliance in the Western Cape is at the forefront of investigating mismanagement and driving the safety and service delivery throughout the chaos that is in the Metro Rail crisis. After I wrote to the Public Protector's Office to investigate the Metro Rail crisis, the office agreed to investigate the mismanagement of the Metro Rail in the Western Cape, and we are going to be kept abreast with all the investigation uh, on the time of weekly two weeks uh, basis. Speaker, this investigation is supported by both the Premier and the Western Cape, uh, the Western Cape Premier Helen Zile, and the communities who are almost affected by the metro rail crisis on the daily basis. This level uh, speaker of cooperation is necessary to address the, man, the, the mismanagement causing the crisis in the metro rail. Speaker, the degree of rot in the metro rail was demonstrated to the Standing Committee on Community Safety just yesterday, where the subs revealed that the metro rail in the Western Cape has not had a functional CCTV cameras since 2015. The question is, how do you expect Metro Rail to operate with the safety of the commuters and the infrastructure guaranteed if they have such bad mismanagement of the CCVT cameras since 2015? Subs further explained that there has been an increase over the past three years in incidents of theft and decline in the arrest and confiscation because of poor policing on trains during the peak hours limited communication between Metro Rail and Transnet operation rooms regarding train assons, poor commuter behavior, cancellation, delays, and having, that are having an effect on our rail services. Therefore, Speaker, the Democratic Alliance in the Western Cape remains committed to stabilizing the Metro Rail in the, in the province and ensure that the convenience of the commuters and the safety of the infrastructure is always guaranteed. I thank you. Thank you. That concludes statements. We now move to notices of motion. I see the Honourable Joseph. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I move that the House debate the economic recovery plan as announced by, as announced by President Ramaphosa and, and the impact it will have on the Western Cape. Notice so taken. Any further notices of motion? No? We now move to motions without notice. I see, sorry, are you, are you still with notices of motion, Honorable yeah. Inanna? Yeah, thanks, Deputy Speaker. The motion with notice, Speaker, <laughs> uh, pardon me, that this House debates the failure of the Metro Rail in the Western Cape under the mismanagement of PRASA to provide quality service delivery and security to the rail infrastructure and the commuters. I so move. Notice taken. Honorable Kavida. 
uh, Madam Speaker, I move with notice that this House debates the stalking and abduction of our school learners at schools, whether it's on the in premises or outside. Notice taken. Any further notices of motion? No further notices. That concludes that section. We now move to motions without notice. I see Honourable Porter. Thank you, Speaker. Motion without notice that this House commends the ruling by the Constitutional Court today that the former Minister of Social Development, Batabile Dlamini, is personally liable for 20% of the costs related to a case brought forward by the Black Sash and Freedom Under Law. The inquiry probed ministers, Minister Dlamini's appointment of individuals to lead the work streams within SASA, reporting directly to her. Today's findings vindicate the 1.5 million Western Cape residents dependent on SASA grants in the Western Cape. I so move. Are there any objections? No objections. I see the Honourable Inana, after which I see Member Joseph. Thank you, Deputy Sp uh, the, uh, Speaker. The motion with out notice that this house calls on the metro rail in the Western Cape under the mismanagement of Prasa to improve the functionality of CCVD cameras, which have not worked since 2015. The security of both the community, co co commuters and the infrastructure must be guaranteed. I so move. Are there any objections? There are no objections. I see the Honourable Joseph, after which it's Honourable Makusela. Um, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I stand for that the is Mr. Hans Otterfanger. Bedank for his dienst van 26 years in the Garden Road District Municipality. As the head of the Paaie Afdeling was it his responsibility to the District Paaie van 7 Municipalities in stand to hold. We want Mr. Otterfanger to ask for his three years. I stand so for Thank you. Are there any objections to the motion being moved? There are no objections. I see the Honourable Makosella and then um, Honourable Kavido. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. I hereby move without notice that the House welcomes the ruling by the South African Human Rights Commission that the disgraced former ANC chairperson in the Western Cape, Mr. Marius Fransman, must apologize to the Jewish community for his highly disgraceful and shocking anti Semitic comments he made in 2013. Further notes that he is not, he is not the only ANC leader who has spewed anti-Semitic comments against the Jewish community. In February this year, right in this honorable house, ANC member Sharon Davids referred to the Jewish community as the Jewish mafia, calls on the house to condemn the ANC for its unrepentant anti-Semitic track record I so move. Are there any objections to the motion being moved without notice? There are no objections. I see the Honourable Kavido. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker. I move without notice that the House express its deepest condolences to the wife, children, and grandchildren of ex Metro Councillor Gordon Thomas, who has passed away on Sunday, 23rd of September 2018. The late Mr. Thomas served his awards in Easter River and Mfuleni with great fortitude, diligence, loyalty, and dedication. He has been a real servant of the people, and specifically the marginalized and disadvantaged. He was a loving husband, father, and grandfather, institutionalizing strong spirituality, morals, ethics, values, and principles in all and sundry. We cherish his memories. May his dear soul rest in peace. I so move. Thank you. Are there any objections? No objections. Any further motions without notice? Okay. That concludes motions. Is there one more? Sorry, Honorable <laughs> Makasela. <laughs> I've got a few. And then Honorable I'll Kavido. Be quick, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I move that the House congratulates uh, Minister David Schaefer for her visit to Overstrand Municipality on September 21. We spent a full day visiting schools, looking at various issues affecting schools, in sh including emotional trauma and delays in academic uh, program, 
owing to recent riots in the Zwelithle Hermanas. The rollout to the catch-up of, of the catch up program for the learners and the implementation of the counseling program for the learners and teachers. Further note that this parliament acknowledges that the culture of learning and teaching is well on track with very little concerns to note in some of the following schools which we visited. Claymont Pri Premier, Hostin Primary School, Hostin High School, Solithe Primary, Lucanio Primary, Kaya High School, Mount Pleasant Primary School, People's Project Farm, a People's Project Farm in the Yemen and Arte Valley. I so move. Thank you. Are there any objections? There are no objections. I see the Honourable Kavido. I see Member Schaefer is having a giggle there. Thank you. Thank you, Akbar Speaker. Order, please. the Munition Verder zal ons allemaal nagedacht en is eer in hulle nalatenskap koester. Ik stel zo voor. Are there any objections? There are no objections. So I see Honorable Makrosel and then Member Joseph. Honorable Speaker, I move that the House congratulates Minister Allen Winde on his successful nomination as the Democratic Alliance's Premier Candidate for 2019 general elections. Further note that this Parliament acknowledges Mr. Winde's contribution in this Parliament in the Western Cape province and wish him the best of luck with the election campaign. Finally note that the ANC has not managed to hold a successful elective conference to elect their own provincial chairperson and sympathizes with them as they traverse in the darkest valley of nomination to ensure that they have got their own premier candidate. I so move. Thank you. Are there any objections? There are no objections. I see the Honourable Joseph, after which Dankie, I see the Honourable um, McKinsey. Thank you, Speaker. I stel voor dat die huis geluk wense aan die twee Order, please. I stel voor dat die huis geluk wense aan die twee broers van Delft op die kapse vlakte Rizaz en Rijad. Uitspreek, uitspreek. En waar in een geval die, die Rijad die top presteerder is aan de Universiteit uh, van Vrijstaat, so op verkundige faculteit bekroon is, en dat sy broer uh, die uitblinker was by Matis. Dit dien as sprekende bewys dat hulle met geloof en deersettingsvermoe uh, in, in onder moeilike omstandighede kan uitstijg. Ons uh, bid hulle voorspoed toe. Ek stel so voor. Thank you. Any objections? There are no objections. I see Honorable McKenzie. Thank you, Speaker. I hereby move without notice that this house sends its condolences to the family of the late Reggie Jankies, the Cape Town football legend. Reggie was an attacking midfielder and striker who played for both Hellenic and Cape Town Spurs in the 1980s and the 1990s. Further note that he's also been the head coach of Marty's soccer club at Stellenbosch and lately a youth development coach at the Beers uh, AFC in Fergrove. Jankis is survived by his wife Esther and their three children. May their soul rest in peace. So Are there any objections to the motion? There's no objections. I see Honorable Boerta and Honorable Makrosela. I hereby move without notice that this House congratulates the University of Cape Town for retaining its position as the top higher education and training institution in Africa following the release of the latest 2019 Times Higher Education World University Rankings. Further notes that Africa's premier institution has also moved up the world rankings to 156 this year from 171 position in the previous year calls on the House to congratulate UCT, its commitment to conducting world-class research and maintaining its excellent facilities, which continue to attract students and academia from across the globe. I so move. Thank you. Are there any objections? There's no objection agreed to. I see Honorable Makrosela. Honorable Speaker, I move that the House notes with great admiration the successful nomination of Minister Dan Plato is the new mayor, mayor for Cape Town to succeed Mayor Patricia Telile. Further note that this parliament congratulates Mr. Plato and acknowledges his immense contribution to this house and the people of the Western Cape. Finally, this house wishes our mayor-elect, Sir Mr. Plato, well in his role 
as mayor of this beautiful and mother city. I thank you. Thank you. Are there any objections? No objections. Any further motions without notice? I see the Honourable Mackenzie. Thank you, Speaker. I move here by move without notice that this House congratulates General Becky Trele for implementing DA policy by bringing back the specialized gang units and commiserate with the thousands of people who died during the last many years for the ANC's government failure to bring back the gang units. I so move. Are there any objections to the motion being moved without notice? Is there an objection? Will be printed on the order paper below? No? Okay, are there any further motions without notice? That concludes motions without notice. We are now going to deal with um, the Provincial Economic Review and Outlook and Municipal Economic Review and Outlook. I call upon the Minister of Finance to table. Minister Ivan Mayer, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Given what has happened earlier in this House, Firstly, I want to thank uh, and express my sincere thanks and appreciation to my staff, the various researchers, the economists, policymakers, and senior managers for shaping both the research problem and participating substantively in the actual research findings. I would also like to thank all the various departments in this Western Cape government and members of this cabinet for their support during this research process. Madam Speaker, it is therefore my pleasure to table the 2018 Provincial Economic Review and Outlook, the speech, and the 2018 Municipal Economic Review and Outlook for consideration for this House. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Mayor. The Provincial Economic Review and Outlook and Municipal Economic Review and Outlook will now be referred to the relevant committees for consideration. I don't know if there's going to be any impact because I've been told that before we adjourn, we need to remind members that the budget committee meeting will commence after the adjournment in the chamber. The House is adjourned. That concludes the business of the day. I thank you.